get into go for your week go for your weekend weekend in sport and then the big game city and then go through the Everton. Just say tonight's episode sponsored by are we on we're going to lower this down you're going to keep this nudging yeah, in the background all right yeah we're away. Okay, we're live. Monday Night Football, live obviously live. common sense with us. Um, Cambo, Mark Campbell in the studio, Josh Wilson in the studio, obviously Noah's looking after the, the technical side of it there. Um, big game, Chelsea, Newcastle, albeit not in the position in the table that we thought they'd be. No one seriously thought we'd be talking about Ten. Chelsea and Newcastle <laughs> being 10th v 11th. No. But obviously both teams having a strange old season and we'll get to them. One of your ex-teams, lad. Yeah, the two and a half, we had great, great few years there. Absolutely loved it. Um, haven't been up there for a while, albeit we've had a few people coming through asking us to do a few shows in October, so we're exploring that possibility. I had a great run up there, um, doing a few live shows and a few uh, talks. It was really good, well received. So Good people. Great people. It'd be good to get back up there and obviously, um, you know, hopefully the, the, the team have picked back up because it'll be into a new season. Um, but again, big game tonight. I, I think they've got a Huge task to get to fourth. Villa losing to Tottenham. <laughs> it opens up a little bit more, but not well, much. Well, the, the 15 points behind Villa with the game in hand. So if they win tonight, the 12 points behind. I think it's just too much at this point. I don't think. I think Spurs and Man United have got a better chance than Newcastle of getting mm. to Villa. Um, so it's going to be a how high can they finish for the two? And then obviously, can you get in the Europa League or you know, the, the Europa Conference or whatever Liverpool are in this season? Yeah. One of these Mickey Mouse competitions. Yeah. Both, uh, <laughs> both teams tonight have obviously they've kind of been forgotten about, haven't they? In the Premier League. Yeah, well, it's due to the league position, isn't it? You know what I mean? You can't you can't spend a billion quid and be eleventh. Like no one's going to pay that much attention to you. Uh, it's got to the cup final, so I think there will be stuff Pochettino can take out of it. Still the youngest team on average, aren't they, in the, in the division? The growing, like, yeah. The growing um, team. There's going to be, I think, a few areas of scaring moments before the end of the, the season, but you would expect to see an, an improvement from them um, after they do a bit of a bit of business in the summer and, and maybe lose players, not actually bring them in. I think losing Did players for Chelsea might work. Yeah. You name a team on a Saturday and there's 40 lads in the dressing room. 29 of them, a few minutes, they're not being they've picked. They've got a few out on no loan as well, haven't they? There's a few out on loan who are going to come back, so they've got to get rid of half a dozen, maybe, Chelsea. They've got well, they've got it for the FFP, based on what Kieran, Kieran McGuire yeah. said to us anyway. They've got to write that. So it was a strange old weekend in, in sport. Again, you know, we'll have a chat tonight before we get into the, the, the nitty-gritty of this game. But um, for me, the, the trickiest... Uh, part of the weekend really was knowing what sport to watch and what <laughs> channel to be on. It was tough with the Six Nations being on. Obviously, I'm a mad sportsman, um, and I've I've got a bit of an interest in the Six Nations in terms of me. Mates have a little a little bet on e on each game. Um, bet, do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only only pennies, but you know, not not that the FA cared when they fucking threw the book at me for eighteen months. But um, so so I'm watching the the, the obviously the. Um, the, the game sat the Everton Man United the early kickoff obviously me, me blew persuasion to the point where I'm having to watch it in the middle of me, me missus is going out for Mother's Day with a with a sister and a family so obviously I had the kids on Saturday so I'm, I'm trying to manage finishing off picking the kids up from footy getting the, uh, the three boys of footy which was carnage like herd and cats I had to go and get my little girl from dancing obviously trying to get the Everton game so I was um, I was having to use all modern technology to stay abreast I finally got in for the for the last 20 minutes and, and Everton played alright but Obviously, gives away, away two stupid pens. What's, what's, what, what's your honest opinion, lad, on Daish? Like, as a blue and obviously playing <clears throat> under Daishi, you knowing Daishi? I think for where we are as a club, I think he's the perfect man. I, I was saying it a while before he got the job, even before Lampard and a few went in, I was like, he's just, he's just tailor made for, for where Everton are at this moment to help stabilise the club through a really tough period. And then hopefully he can further on, you know. The job he did at Burnley will stand the test of time. You know, look at, at the, you know, I know they had a better performance Sunday, but yeah. you know, the rooted to the bottom. You know, Dyche's style slightly different to companies, but also you know, Dyche had a way better chance at staying in the Prem than what company has based on mm. what's yeah. happened so far. So you know, in football, the big challenge I think for Dyche was how far can you take Burnley, and I think he took it. You know, he got them into the Europa League, and, and uh, you know, oh. to, like how how can you? Like Darth Vader there. Yeah. Trying to eat the cat. <laughs> that's, your, that's your new beard. That's I'm your, your father. Beard, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So the big challenge for Daishi was obviously can't cut, how far can you take Burnley? You know, obviously if you get Everton and you stabilise Everton and you build Everton, I don't want to disrespect a club of obviously old so close to my heart, but like the potential for Everton with a new stadium and everything is, is ginormous compared yeah. to obviously Burnley. So the test I think will, will come for Daishi when he's made it through the turmoil. This season's going to be mm. big because you've just got to stay up. I think next season as well, turmoil. But the fans well, now, though, yeah. they're growing anxious, restless, aren't they, with yeah, Daish like, in particular. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, being an Evertonian myself. I think he can't score the goals himself, do you know what I mean? He can't get on the pitch and score the goals. The, the team are creating the chances. It's just that the, the personnel aren't. aren't it's right, I've got that, that stat there from the weekend where Everton had 23 shots. Yeah, and goal. Well, but Man United are still like... Much. Man United are still all over, like for me still all over the gaff. Like I just don't, I just can't, I just don't, can't see what what they're trying to do. Like I think they are literally just pissing in the wind. And Ten Hag ultimately, I think, will be the be the sacrificial lamb. And think, they'll, like you know, it's happened to Mourinho, it's happened to Van Hal, you know, it, it's happened to Moyes. It's it, you know, whoever goes in there, there's a cultural pollution. Of their football club, Liverpool. You should know this is Liverpool. You just went through us. I think a similar thing. And I can. Oh, we did. Know. We had we had Roy Hodgson come in and try and and. No, I'm not saying it's saying it's like Ten Hag, but we had Roy Hodgson come in. I just wasn't a right fit. I don't think Ten Hag's a right fit. I, I don't I, at United. I think he knows he's already gone personally. That's my opinion on the, the. I think the powers that be when they get new owners come in, they always seem to like. I want my own stamp on this yeah. club, and I think Ten Hag. I'd be shocked at the end of the season if he's, if he's still there. If, if he hasn't, if he doesn't get the bullet. Million. I know it's not to Man United, but it's still 15 million to get rid of him. <sighs> so you've got to be, first, you've got to have someone coming in who you think's better, which is a costly exercise. Yeah. Secondly, you've got to give him a war chest because they give 10 Ags at the war chest. Of course, you know, yes. like, you know, and then you've got to compensate not only 10 Ag, but all the staff that are loyal to him that he's brought in. No. So it's a, it's a huge turnover. It's not just as simple as, oh, he's shite, get rid of him. You know, it can be a 40, 50 million pound decision that ju just on personnel and staff and ideology of where the club's gone in terms of players signed. I think they'll give him to the end of the season, but you can, you know, without a doubt. I think it's, regardless of what happens in the season, I think he's gone, but... But the root and brand, so Brailsford's quite, you know, microscopic with his um, yeah. level of detail he goes to and understanding everything. He comes from a cycling kind of background, an Olympian kind of Olympic... Uh, Background with if you're looking for, you know, it's famous for marginal gains, isn't he? You know, shaving other pillars. Can we get softer duvets so they have a better night's sleep and that'll make the cyclist race better and so on and so forth? And that's great. And as Steve Black used to always say to me, the marginal things, marginal gains things, massive as it is, really important. Yeah. But it's only really important when you're doing absolutely everything else right. So you can, it's worth worrying about the pillow when you know you're sleeping, you're training, your diet, your attitude, your culture, yeah. and everything's right, mm. then you get your marginal gains. And but it looks, not. it looks like they're not. They're not. You know, yeah. you've, got, you've got, no, I don't mean to blame him, but you've got like Anthony Marshall sitting there picking up fortunes and doing fucking nothing. Mm, so yeah. you can imagine what he what he's like in, in around the training ground. And, and then you've just got, as I say, you know, I, I think a captain in Fernandez who, for me, just isn't the Man United captain. When I think of Brian Robson, when I think of Roy Keane, Steve Bruce, I just, mm. I just don't see how he falls into that. When we were successful, we had a big, you know, look at Liverpool performance yesterday. Van Dijk, for me, in the midst of a load of young lads in the team, was a colossal player. He stepped up, he grew into the armband. I don't ever see that happening to Fernandes. I, I think he's a talented boy, he's got some qualities, no doubt. But I just don't see him as Petulant the general shit. that you want to follow into battle. Like, I just don't get it. Who is then? Who's, who's the captain at United? Well, maybe they have to buy him, maybe they have to buy one. Yeah. Maybe that's... You know, the young lad me now looks a really good prospect. Talent, yeah. But I'm telling you, you know, you know <laughs> Casemiro alongside him, that's that's gonna Well, I'll keep getting his name wrong. <laughs> what is his name? Mainu. Mainu, yeah. Well like Mainu. So so with Dice then do you reckon he So we, for we me need to stick with him. Yeah, he's look, the right in man football you've got to be careful that um Better devil, you know. Everyone everyone thinks the grass is greener on the other side mm. and, and it's not always. Particularly those blues. Well, like we got rid of Martinez, you know. <sighs> I think the last thing, as a Liverpool fan, the last thing everyone wants to do is sack another manager. I think that'll just be ridiculous. I can sack the players. I, I think for, like, even, even think shots. about it, let, let, no. let's just be pragmatic. Even if Everton have the worst season ever and they get relegated, who's the best man to stabilise in the champ? Daish. I think you know, Daish, like, 
he's not getting Everton relegated. I just don't. Well, I, 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 just, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I'm saying like, worst like case. We, we've yeah. gone through this and teams do it. They go, oh yeah, and then you can you actually can get a lot worse in the pursuit of trying to get better. Like I'm not saying Daishi's the man. He's got to go and prove that. And uh, you know, as I say, he's coming to the club in a really tough time. Yeah. He's got chaos going on off the park. I don't yeah. think it's the greatest team we've ever... It's, you know, the financial hamstring and the points deduction. Not, and I just think, give him a bit more time, like like anything. Like, look at Arteta now. He's finally... He's had four or five seasons where he spends a lot of money. And, you know, the team's off and puffed and it's now going along and he's got them in the, in the title race. But also, it's because he's had a lot of time saved with the players mm. to Correct. be allowed to do, his, to, to do his job. So f- I just wanted to touch on the weekend's footy. Before I do that, I just need to mention the lads at a Zephyr World. The um, they sent me a load of gear in, it's a, too a small. load of gear in for the lads. He's saying it's too small. It's really nice stuff actually. These are like the joggy bottoms, just like nice joggy bottoms. To be fair, I'm wearing them absolutely terribly today. Straight model. I did model. promise the lads I would uh, send them a little tweet to say thanks, and I've totally forgot over the weekend. I just got mad, mad busy, so I thought, what better way than to wear it tonight? You know, tilt some endorsements. But uh, thanks for sending it in, lads. Really appreciate it. It's lovely stuff, it's like gym gear. Any double XL for uh, no, double X- three? I don't know whether they go Giacomo. <laughs> three I don't know whether they're in Giacomo. <laughs> yeah, for you, lad. <laughs> Any forty inch weights, you August? <laughs> but uh, he's a label man anyway. He's like a big one, unless it's like Paris uh, Juicy Culture or something like that. Juicy. He won't wear. It. He won't wear. It. <laughs> uh, but it's lovely gear, gym gear. He, he did send me a load of gym t-shirts, which are sound. I get some pictures for you running when when I uh, do the half marathon at the at the weekend in Liverpool. Yeah. Um, but it's really nice gear for sitting around as I say just thought of where to give the lads a little plug alright so to the weekend so Saturday get back in after the Everton game and I'm wanting to watch the Six Nations so I've been clocking this for a few weeks obviously with what we've said with the women's footy so I've been looking at other sports just to say is it just happening in our sport this or is it happening everywhere so the rug- rugby's on and no you'll have to google her name get, get me the her name's Maggie her name's Maggie um, have you got google there or I shouldn't oh, say yeah. google because it looks like they're um they're against white people based on the um is it Google? Yeah, use Bing. Gemini. I haven't got Bing. Someone someone um so so anyway, um the weekend's game. Her name's Maggie, she's a rugby union, I think ex women's player, rugby union, a black lady. And she actually speaks all right about rugby. I don't know much about it other than being a fan, but she speaks all right about it. But what I've noticed is these TV people know. Like they're absolutely aware of what's happening. They're aware of the frustration that they're causing and the misogyny and the sexism and everything else that we don't want to see. They're causing it with their, with their decisions. And they know the reason they're doing it is they're, they're going woke. They're trying to fit you know, people into position to either get funding from that is ECG or something like that, as it's called, where you get funding oh. if you have a certain amount of it. Oh, but, but they know it's not making really good quality programmes and send the wrong message because it's not supporting merit. It's supporting a different political agenda that's got nothing to do with how good the person is for the job. So, watch the rugby. So, Scotland play Italy in the early kickoff, and obviously, because I'm with, with my mates having a little a little flutter across the games, so we're just betting against each other. The 20 pounder uh, who's got the team and the point Z start on the rugby, so it gives you a bit of interest in watching it. And Scotland, obviously, great game. Italy win the first game at, 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 at in the Six Nations in the Olympic Hall, like right at the death. So they beat them, and it's a, it's a fantastic contest. Scotland would expect it to win. And the commentary team on that is two two males and a female. And she's this Maggie lady. Maggie Alfonsi. Maggie Alfonsi. She's the one, she gets rolled out because I think she gives them two ticks. She gives them the woman and she gives them the black woman. Yeah. I don't know what her sexuality is. I don't care, but she might give them a third tick. I don't know, but she definitely gives them at least two. So they put it on, on the rugby. So this is on ITV or uh, ITV on the rugby. But she always gets the worst game, right? Yeah. So she'll always end up with the, the worst game. So it's, if like Italy play France out the back, no one cares about. She'll do the last game. She never gets. No, she doesn't seem to get what I've seen the main game. So I'm watching Everton flick over. Um, don't listen to the analysis and all that because I'm yeah. just I'm chocking with the kids. Every, uh, anyway, watching the rugby now. Scotland get beat. So I'm in now trying to build for me three, three o'clock, knowing that. At R5, you've got Arsenal, Brentford, and you've got the Saturday 3 o'clock coming in. But also, Ireland are playing England in the rugby, which was quite a big game, and I wanted to watch that. So, bang, out, bang it over, over across the, the, uh, the, the build-ups of the footy on, like, the, the soccer Saturdays. I see yeah. Simon Thomas. You want level with you? I think he's dreadful. I think he's absolutely dreadful on soccer Saturday, like, bad. 
And now I know he's had a terrible thing happen to him with his wife passing away and all that. But that shouldn't excuse you. He's like really bad. Like yeah. Jeff Stellan was Jeff well was better. Great one, just well better. Mm. Like, why have you changed that? Like that was mm. a that was a, that was like one of the last bastions of an all I'd show you. Did they change it or is, did, did ch- Jeff move on on his own accord? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't presume know. they all got squeezed out. That's what, yeah, that's I what I got. Well, the test was cancelled yeah. off that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. He, he left Jeff Stellan, didn't he? But then he but came I think back. He, I think he left because of what was going on. Yeah, because they were getting other people. His mates. They were getting other people who, not because they weren't good enough, because they didn't fill the quotas or tick the boxes, which is where we'll get to on this. And it sounds like I'm going on a bit long winded, but so a flick over for the rugby, the main game, the big game, Ireland, England. No, not a woman in sight. No no women rugby players in sight. Brian O'Driscoll, Lawrence Delalio, Johnny Wilkinson, Mark Pugat just anchoring it. And then Rory Best coming in on the feed, on the commentary, and the two commentators, there was a commentator, and the two comment, co-commentators were one English ex-player and one Irish ex-player. Yeah. It was done superbly. I was like, I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm learning about the game. I was informed. I love, I was, so I was like, do you actually know? Because if you went to the, watch a Liverpool game or any big game, there's never a woman on them. So sat Sunday's game on the Man City Liverpool, the biggest game, was presenting. Obviously, you get the, the odd women presenter, yeah. Kelly's presenting us or whatever, but you had... Um, uh, Roy Keane, Michael Richardson, obviously, vibey vibes, Studge. <laughs> um, anyway, but they've all played the game, all got an opinion, to, you know, whatever. Like, no, no woman in sight, so they actually know. So, on the big programs, they never put them in because they know it drags the standard down. Mm. But as I say to you, I watched the Ireland rugby game, yeah. f- fantastic finish. Arsenal are now kicking off, so I'm flicking across for Arsenal, Brentford. Ireland game's finishing, and I flick across and Obviously, Arsenal, I got like the last bit of the Arsenal game where they come back and win and, and obviously shown for me, title can, can, if you get yeah. a late winner like that at this in March, you're in the mix and, and obviously they go to the top of the league and, and yesterday's results stay there. Then, I don't know what, but half five game finishes and then so they've got a load of time, like Monday Night Football, where they're speaking after the game and I'm like, okay, who's on the who's on the punditry? I haven't watched the half time or anything because I, I had the kids. Who's on the Who's on the punder? Karen, Karen Carnage, Karen Carnage, Karen Carnage and Jamie Redcrap. <laughs> so I'm like, oh god. So I thought, you know what? I'll give them a I'll give, let, let, let's. I've watched most of the game. I've seen the decide and goal the moments. Nothing, like literally nothing. And they had a really good segment there, and they lost me after about nine minutes, eight minutes. I was trying my best to stick with it because I've met Karen Carney outside Carnage, Karen Carney outside Wembley, but. And she's a lovely person, great, great footballer in, in the women's game, but she's just out of her depth. Anyway, I get, I then get to obviously flipping over, and then the Sunday games, and then I said what I said, and then I get a lovely phone call. Last night I got a text, and then I got a phone call off Mike Richards this morning. We we're just chatting about all things, and I won't talk about what we were talking about, but we, we got some serious points of discussion on the table. A um, lot more agreement than I thought we were going to get by the end of the conversation. And I like Michael a lot. He, he's, a, he's a real good skin, like he's a real good uh, lad. And, you know, you can say what you want about his punditry, but he's got his own unique way of doing it. And he's doing fantastic in America and that, and I'm not knocking it. Is it what I want to watch all the time? No, because I'm wanting the serious stuff, but also, you know, there's got to be a bit of light-hearted stuff in there. And I think Michael's done incredibly well to bring a softer side to Roy Keane. I think he, <laughs> him and Roy kind of weirdly... <laughs> have become a really good yeah, double act because, you know, Roy's mega serious. And, and let's be honest, I really want to listen to Roy over most pundits, but he brings a softness to Roy that I think the, the, the duo works. To put Sturridge in the middle of that didn't think quite worked. Um, but anyway, the game finishes and we'll, we'll get to that all the talk and points around it. But I looked at it and I went, these actually know, these actually know what is the best product in terms of what works better. And they're actually going out the way to make programming worse for us. So it's not it's not the girl's fault. In the midst of this conversation, anyway, Mike had put a few things. We were talking back and forth, and he did mention about Ian Aluko, and he said, "But have you ever thought about this?" And I actually hadn't at that point, and I went, "You know what, Mike? Mix, like, yeah, you know what? Like, I, I take that on board." And I'm not wanting to be on here, Kane and women like they're doing. You know, every weekend I could be here, getting after them like my Twitter feed. I didn't even know Karen Carnage was on uh, the Saturday night program. Because I was watching the rugby, and my Twitter feed just blows up. People are going, "What's going on? What's he on about? What's he on about?" <laughs> and by the way, they say red crap's terrible as well. And I can't, I can't disagree. And I actually get on with Jamie. So I'm just annoying you up, calling you Karen Carnage and, and Jamie red crap. But you're on the telly, and you're a, 
not doing what you could do. You know, you, you get asked a question and you go, yeah, it could have been this and it also could have been that. And I'm like, fucking tell us. You get paid to tell us what you think it is. Don't fucking say both answers. Anyway, Sunday's game, we get it out the way. I thought there was a few contentious issues in, in, in that Liverpool game. Mm-hmm. Don't know about your thoughts. But from this moment on, we've said our piece on, on the women and we think we've, we've I've, certainly, I think I've raised awareness to it. I'm not wanting to be, I had a Sunday and Mother's Day, I had an amateur Welsh f- women's footballer for some reason just attack me on Twitter. I didn't even know, I don't even know her. Like questioning your credibility when like they're playing like a standard of football that. I could play. <laughs> uh, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Like a standard of football that like just shouldn't, you shouldn't be spouting and going on and reaching out to people online to try and attack them because they're, they're saying their truth. Like, it's my truth. I don't think women should be talking about the men's game. I just don't think they're qualified. Now, sure. if, if you want to debate me, listen, no problem. Any woman out there, any elite level woman player, come on, man, let's have a chat. I'm not wanting to have a war with you or, you know, but I do want you out of our game. I do want the men's game for the men and I do want the women's game for the women. The women's game's doing fantastic. Go and grow your own game. Leave our game alone. All right, so I ain't gonna be nailing them from now on. My target's gonna be the people who are giving these people jobs because not only are they giving people who aren't good enough jobs, they're also causing those people to get the abuse and the stuff that comes online. And we've had the BBC hit piece, Mariana Spring and Ian Lujo. Nobody wants to come on and have a fair debate with us. And, and all we're looking for here is to get the best person in the job. What's so fundamentally wrong with that? We want the best person in the job, like Ian Wright and Carrera on here talking about the game tonight, and you're learning, because you're listening to Wrighty saying, I would love, I just used to say to my fullbacks, get on the channel, look at that, and Nunez's movement, look at, he's not filling space with his noise, trying to say big words, or key phrases like, counter-pressing or gegen-pressing, which they got no fucking clue what it means. <laughs> They've just heard Klopp say it, or someone who's got a clue say it, and they go, oh, I'm going to say that next time. The same way you see people like Emma Hayes who are like saying big, long words. She used to be like Adele, like a little cheeky cockney bear who spoke common sense. And I went, I don't mind what she's saying. Now when I listen to her, because I think they're trying to get her a man's job in the male game, she's using all big, long words trying to make herself sound that intelligent. And I'm like, be yourself. Hmm. Be genuine to yourself. And I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility that a woman could manage in the Premier League. I don't, genuinely. Will a woman ever play in the Premier League? No. I don't think that'll ever happen. Unless, you know, unless a freak what of the, nature... What about the trans women? <laughs> I'm going to say that. What about, what about these new women? Well, there's no <laughs> such thing. There's men, women, I don't know what you're... They're, they're like, and, and even Keir Starmer, the ultimate flip-flop, has absolutely yeah, um, said common sense and he's used our podcast. Thanks, Keir. He's, <laughs> he's tagged the uh, podcast in because he said, look, it, it is common sense. People will get hurt if that happens. You know... I listened to Riley Gaines uh, talking on Joe Rogan the other day and I followed it for a while. And it's just a mad story what happens. We, as men, should be helping women protect their own sports and their own spaces. And what you've got is a load of gimp men, gimps, who are going, no, 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 man. You, and I'm like, it's got nothing to do with you, mate. If women don't feel safe in that changing room because some dude's in there it's, yeah. pretending to be a, a woman, then we have to listen to, the, to, to, to these women. Yeah. It's it's not all it's not for us men to go, oh, we can't listen to these. So from here on in, I'm not wanting a war with women. All right. I've said what I've said. You know how strongly I feel on it. I think a lot of people's eyes have been open to it if they weren't already before. From what I gather, trust me now, it's about a month of people interacting. The feedback I'm getting is ridiculously positive. Like 90% of people I'm running into saying you you're you're absolutely right. I totally agree with you. Like you know, some people have said to me the way I use my words or maybe calling them cabbage patch dolls or serial killers is wrong and they have to take that on board. Mike had also made a great point today about it opens up a, 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 a hornet's nest of, of abuse for people and I'm like, well, look, unfortunately, I don't want that to happen. That's the last thing I want is any of these girls feeling the way they are. But also, when you go on the mainstream TV and you te- you're trying to tell people about before. something you don't know anything about, you're going to get you're yeah. going to get people saying, shut the fuck up. Um, you know, some people aren't going to say it as nicely as what Kevin Keegan did. I what I said to Mike, I seen Kevin Keegan say it as politely and as nicely as he could, and he rounded on and ridiculed him. And I just thought, well, I'm not going to make that mistake because no matter how kind or how nice my words are, you're coming for me on it. So we've drawn the battle lines. The battle lines are women, ex-players, should be talking about women's football. 
on Sky or, or whatever program TNT they're on, and men's ex players should be talking about the men's game. I'm not saying all women should be out of football, albeit yeah. my real life experiences, like it'd be, it'd be easier for me to run a building, but also I'm a realist. You know, there's some women who contribute massively in the off the field stuff and in the back room, and I get that. I'm saying to talk about the game with authority, with 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 an analysis, and a, I, I just don't think it's it's um, yeah it's working. And and they know because on the big games, on the rugby and on the football, they're never in, they never have to, they're nowhere near it. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they, they roll them out everywhere but else. So from have... here on in, we're talking about. Women's football now. If there's any blaring mistakes out there and people are getting carried away again, we may well have to talk about it. <laughs> you know I mean, we may well have to talk about it. But I'm saying for now, I don't want to be talking about them every other week. Points being made, everyone's seen it for what it is. You've seen the way they've turned on us for saying what we all can see with our eyes. All we're wanting here is a better standard, and I don't like it when I see people getting passed over for jobs because of the colour of the skin or because of the sexuality. Whichever way that goes, I, I don't. And it's not okay just because it's white people and, and because it's straight white people to just cancel them. I done that heretics last week with that with Andrew. It was cancelled because he was white. We we don't want that. That will drag everything down. It's already dragging the journalistic standards down, and it will drag our society down it, if we're not careful. It's dragging society down full stop because everyone that's I think you mentioned yourself, we're becoming a lazy society because of it. No one wants to work hard to get the places where they need to be no more because they're thinking. I can just leapfrog him, him and him because I take a box over there. So th that's going to be detrimental to society going forward for generations. Well, absolutely. If we start box taking forever. Yeah. Because no one's going to work harder. Well, it's, it, you might as well play the victim card. Like, actually, exactly. let, 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 I said this seriously. What's the point in being an old man? Like, an old white man? There's no point. You might as well jazz up your life. Say you're a woman. You can go and use their changing rooms. <laughs> you start winning all the races. You get sponsorships off Bud Light or fucking Lady Gaga. I get to take a, a photo with you. Like... As, a, as an old white man, there's nothing... Like, you're getting nothing. Like, you're literally... Yeah. So what's going to stop even more in the future of going, do you know what? Fuck that, I'll have a go with that. Yeah, but I, th I think they already know that that the society is... I just, Sky and that have their top analysis and the data team looking who is the most... who gives us the most viewing figures and, you know, what's, what... And they're not going to put hair on in front of him when they get their most viewing figures there... Because they're going to criticise. Yeah, but this is uh, the thing of what's... all the funding behind it, because they don't get certain grants and certain funding, from what I gather, unless they have a certain amount of every well, that's the ethnic post, isn't it? background. Surely Sky don't need funding. No, I swear to you, this no, looks Sky like an ESG or something like that. Has funding. The, the guys out there might know more than us. I'm sure, I've heard a few people, because this is creeping into a, you know, a, 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 every aspect of society. It's not just in football. And um, anyway, uh, I think it's to do with the way the funding's given to them or whatever, but clearly... Like that can't be right. It can't be right. Mm. Like mm. It, 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 it's actually racist in its in its, it, in its it, concept. It's just a shame that the beautiful games the ones suffering from it. Yeah, well, again, because they've gone, there's so much money there. Everyone's petrified that they're not doing the right thing. And you've seen the amount of virtue signaling we get through in fucking Premier League football now. You know, it, 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 sports washing. It's sports has been captured. We need to get away from it being politicised and get it back to its truest form, which can unite people, can unite countries, can unite. Um, People who would never normally agree football. What other sport you go to and hug men? <laughs> As a straight white male, what other sport you go to and sing? Uh, you know, you don't go to church anymore. In essence, this is people's release. Like, and it's a big yeah. study this week mm. done in the Telegraph. I think the Labour uh, MP Wes Streeton done a piece in the Telegraph talking about men's suicide rates again. And men, like, football is massively important towards men's mental health. You know, you've seen that with COVID. Oh yeah. And now that you've got. Honestly, the takeover of our spaces, of our spaces by the women. <laughs> we'll be fighting back, aren't we? Yeah. We've got to have a scrap back. All right, let's get to the uh, Chelsea game. We'll, we'll talk about all the weekend's uh, yeah, events. We, we need we scores. Want, we want to get yeah, into little uh, score Liverpool, predictions, Chelsea please, and that. We'll get to them. Let's go through the teams. And what get scores some right. what so bets we got? we got 4 2 3 1 here with Chelsea, Petrovic in goal, Gusto, full backs liabilities. Saicedo and who was the other one? Was that Chalabar, the other centre yeah. half? No, um, no Col Colwell. Col no, he's not, he's injured. All right, might have been Chalabar. Uh, uh, Palmer Gallagher, Sterling. Palmer, That's yeah. decent. So you had Fernandez and Saicedo as the sitters, and then you've got a, a three of Palmer, no, Sterling, and, and who was the other one? Palmer, Gallagher. Sterling, Gallagher. Gallagher, and then obviously uh, Jackson up the top. All pushing for an England. Please. Yeah, Chalaba. Um, Sorry, Miss I, I think he's been brilliant. That Desai, Desai, yeah, or whatever his name is. I thought he was excellent. Desai, the fullbacks are crap at Chelsea, though. 
Big game for Newcastle. Just starting to hear like a few little weird noises about Newcastle. Obviously, the Brav getting goal. I think that's a, a bit of a weak link for them. But I like really good back four. Trippy, Trippy is obviously out. Livermento, Shah, um, Botman, who I think is a class act, and Bain. I think that's that's a midfield. Like he's a lot more legs in there with uh, Longstaff. Like yeah, Gumarish and well, uh, Willock. Definitely more legs, definitely. And then and obviously, I do like the form. Great three shout as well. from the guys last week. Actually, when we were talking about the England size on Anthony Gordon, I thought that was a great shout because on form he's got to be in there. Obviously, Anthony Gordon on the on the uh, on the left on the left. Um, Isaac and who have I missed there? Almira, uh, Al Almiron. Yeah, Miggy he, Almiron. He, he's all right. Um, I think predictions. I, I've gone for two on. one Gordon anytime. 2-1 Newcastle. 2-1 Newcastle yeah. Gordon anytime. I'm going for 2-2. Two, two. Right. Gallagher anytime. Do you know what? I I, I really I, I said to you, I think think goals. I, I, I think there's gonna be a number of goals here. I'm gonna go 2-2. Two, two. I can't just say Gallagher. Me. I don't I fancy 2-2. Two, two. I can't go against Newcastle because mm-hmm. I do feel Chelsea might nick this 3-2. I don't know why. I, 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 I won't go the same as you, then I'll go 3-2 to two. Chelsea. I hate backing against my hard clubs and I'm gonna go first goal. No, or anytime. 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 Oh, I'd go Gordon. I think Gordon's good for one tonight. Yeah, so Gordon's on pens now as well. So yeah. And he took a pen yet last time out. Um, so they're the predictions. Let us know what like you think Claire on Gordon your comments. <laughs> he looks like Lily Savage for me. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else think he looks Andy Gordon and Lily Savage? Anyone <laughs> seen him in the same like room? <laughs> we got a few lookalikes last week, didn't yeah. we? Any lookalikes yeah. in, oh, in the chat, I'm please, for the two fellas on here? Peter, we need some lookalike shouts. Um... Oh, I had Matthew McConaughey last week. That's I decent. That, yeah. I had that. But Matthew but McConaughey also had Matt Letizia, so... I, I also think there'll be a lot of yellow cards in this. McConaughey, that's what I mean. I think, I think there'll be a load of yellow cards in this. I, just, yeah. I think they'll both be at it. One of the lads texted me last night, Jack, said uh, I, I look like Shane Lowry. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's all right. You take that. <laughs> that's, that's not bad. Are you happy with that? Over, oh, well, I'm happy Rooney, with did that. You didn't like the Rooney He's been getting into the punditry, aren't you? I thought he spoke quite well on the overlap, yeah. Try and get him on. He done. Uh, what game did he cover the other night? Uh, Man City, Sky. United. No, it was Sky was it? United Everton. He was on. Was it TNT. TNT. Yeah, United, United Everton. Yeah, he did. United Everton. Yeah. Uh, I, I weren't too keen on the United Everton because they had fucking less got buzzing in. Rio buzzed in. Without just. Uh, and then it was like it was like the commentary was it was <coughs> weird. They were like there was a girl on Wendy Lucy Ward obviously yeah. on there who uh, one of the Wests. <laughs> and um, she was obviously noise pollution, so I didn't. I weren't gonna, weren't gonna bring her up for this game, but like she was noise pollution her up. I didn't mention her, but I knew it was her with Darren Fletcher, and she was that bad. They kept having to get Rooney in from the studio. Rio kept coming in from. The studio. It just sounded terrible. It was really bad from TNT. Rio was one but, of them like marmite ones for me. He's a bit like storage for you. He's like I just, he's just got a weird mouth, Fanny Ferdinand. Uh, yeah, he does, yeah he's, 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 he's sloppy when he talks. Like, wobbly gob, isn't he? Yeah, he's, a bit, he's, a, he's sloppy when he talks. But there is times I listen to him and I go, do you know what? It makes sense there. And then yeah. other times I'm like, he hasn't actually saying. said anything. I don't he's think he's the worst one. out there. No, he's not the worst in him. But I mean, sometimes he tries too hard to like beat the boy. And then sometimes he goes into his football and he should have done this and like... Like I prefer carry- him when I see him a little bit looser off the telly when I see him doing his own podcast and he's a little bit looser and he's saying a bit he's a little bit more relaxed a little bit more him. rather than when he's on the, forced, on, on, yeah. on the telly and he knows he's obviously being watched uh, intently um, but Les Scott was buzzing in and I don't like Les Scott anyway but he was buzzing in offering fucking virtually nothing and then obviously Rooney was coming in and to be fair to Rooney he spoke quite well what he said albeit it was weird because they were in, in the studio, you know. Like, yeah, no, so you they, mean the they were was, in the studio, yeah. and, it, and it was just, it just didn't sound right. Yeah. Um, but it'd be interesting to see because it'd be interesting to see Rooney's brain on like these shows because of how well he's seen the game. Like in terms of, he was a genius player. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. he was a genius full stop playing and obviously off the ball, on the ball. He was just his brain was ridiculous. His football brain was ridiculous, Rooney. Not so much but they're, the, they're the people I want to hear. Like they're the people I want to hear. Not with the greatest respect to uh, Karen Carnage and any of the other cad- cabbage patches. Like I don't want to listen to them. Like I, I've, I want to listen to the top boys. Like unfortunately, the top men, Thierry Henry, last week, righty today. Rooney, obviously, and but I don't Thierry want, I don't want them getting fired in. And they were getting fired in because Lucy Ward was that bad. Like literally, mm. when you when you actually take the position of Tatum and you listen to what they say, <laughs> it's just nonsense. Yeah, like it's me, good to see. Uh, it's good to see the Twitter. Army growing now and, oh, and lad, bringing yeah. things to light. Huge. Like I can't believe that that Welsh amateur. <laughs> yeah, amateur. If that's even a thing, 
Um, Welsh, like Welsh amateur. women's amateur football. Yeah, it's played for like Denbyshire ladies Have or something. So, <laughs> go on, tell a story, John. Oh, tell God. us what happened. No. Tell a tell a stream. So I'm, I'm playing uh, golf Sunday morning. Obviously, it's Mother's Day. So my missus had been like all the things, and she with the kids. So I'm golfing. We had a hooch at our place, and um, I, I, it just got a bit slow because it's like a shotgun start. So I end up getting my phone out. I don't know why, and it just and from, it must be the X, Chant. the algorithm just fired this tweet at me. I was like. Fuck's this like a big essay about how much of a fucking knobhead I was and shouldn't have what the fuck do I know about footy? Pretty much. I read that was clicked on it, know what you do. I'm like, who's this? Clicked on it. I thought she played. Like I, I don't know yeah. any of the women's players or very few. So I thought she played, I clicked on it. She's like like an amateur, like Welsh league <laughs> player from like Welsh women's Premier League or something. I don't even know if, the, if that exists. Whatever it is. as well. Was she? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> sure. shit, yeah. Welsh and uh, anyway, she's giving it me a tight and like I'm just like, I thought it's Mother's Day. I best not say anything. Mm. And then I thought, nah, fuck you. Fucking no, fucking. The gloves are off. You've come looking for me Sunday morning. I ain't come looking for you. I don't even know who you are. You've come looking for me. And you think I'm, and I'm going, are you, are you genuinely that deluded that you think your, your, your opinion's getting taken serious? Like, you genuinely think you could hang with us at football? Like, seriously? Like, so I end up, I think I said to her, get the kettle on or something. Because I'm like, that's what, that's what would happen if she walked in our dressing room and even mentioned a thing to me tactically or technically about football. I'd say, excuse me, you're lost. You're in the wrong changing room. <laughs> See the one there with the female sign on? Get yourself in there and do us a favour. Get the kettle on on your way. Knock us a brew up, will you? <laughs> um, and this is the absurdity of them. Like, they double down. They start arguing back with you. Like, seriously? You, you, you can't debate us about football. Like, we, we're just way better at it than you. There's only one thing worse than that though, is when if like you have a little filter down through the comments and you get these males, males yeah, I've seen them it up, and then you just know the fuck now though because the army's mobilised, our, exactly. our army's better than, and bigger and better equipped than theirs. Hence, uh, we don't even have to be on the socials anymore. Like you just can't get away from us. That's the men as well. It's not just the women. We're, we're just out at old people to a higher standard. But and when you don't shades on the telly, we're when, coming for you. When you always click on these males on their profiles. And they're all every profile picture is like are the same. They're all like big yeah. horrible sludges sitting they're all there. Like, simps, all yeah. Simps, they're all simps, simps, that's simps, the word, yeah. Simps, simps. yeah. That's but also but look, they're, they're inside of their opinion. They sympathise with women in order to say like, ah, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, he's, he's bad. Yeah. We learnt it off Pearl Davis, Pearl so friends own them, but on the other yeah, it's like horrible. Yeah. But again, it's it, that's what that's what weak men have to do. Weak yeah, men weak. have to, to team up with women to take down strong men. And, and you see that in society all around. You just That's all you're seeing. Going, oh, so, oh, uh, and you're like, fuck off, grow a pair, you fat. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell, that's why we're in this situation in the first place. No one said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, in. How's that going in? Jackson this goal is good for assist. our goals. Cole Palmer. Please tell me Jackson's goals. touched that, is he not? He's claiming it's it. Not Jackson's claiming it. They're all looking at he's it. He's claiming it. Fucking Pete over. I, I hope he's touched it. I, I, I said Jackson goal. I've put him on my bet. Yeah, Jack, have you got a Jackson on your bet? Goal or assist, yeah. I think he's and claiming I've got Cole Palmer it. on my team, so... I've he's got Cole Palmer on my team as well. No, he's I, claiming that. I, I think Jackson thinks he's scored this. I'll have to see it back. Well, Palmer ran to Jackson. Tell you what, he's done well, Cole Palmer. Him yeah. and Gallagher have been That's the team. That's his 11th players. goal of the he's season, well. in like 21 games. Well, he's done well, yeah. He's, um... <clears throat> he's... Please tell me he touches this. I've been up praise Botman before. He's got a... Oh, he yeah, does, yeah. Great finish. Yeah, he does. That's a great little touch, that. But Botman, for me, can't... You, like, that, that score near you, you can't... It's got to oh, be in Rose Head, To be it? fair, if he doesn't touch that, it's it not going out. either. Yeah, it's going out, that. That's a great little touch. But for me there, we, we always talk about the four six-yard boxes, so obviously the width of the six-yard box to the penalty spot, then the edge of the box, and then the six yards outside. That's where 96% goals. Yeah. of goals in are scored. Middle. Botman has a chance there to put that in Rose Head and clear it and ends up slicing it into that area, and obviously they get punished. Yeah. And, and I've just been praising Botman. Think, I do genuinely believe Botman is a, a world-class centre-half. And... No. No? No. Oh, I, have to, I do, yeah. He's, he's a good player. He's, a good, he's, a really, he's one of the best Premier League. I wouldn't, so yeah. I wouldn't put him in that. Chance. Oh, I do, Campo, I and he's left-footed as well, which I like. Yeah, you love a left foot, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I like a left-footed at left centre-half. Yeah. Like, would, a... you, would you take Botman over Bramfweight? No. you take Bramfweight before Botman? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's what's coming to me to Liverpool. I, I, I'm not if having I, that. Like... If I've got to pick two players and I'm a Bramfweight yeah, no, over... Yeah, no, this is why I was better than you than champ, man. I was always, always being my champ, man. You wasn't. You fucking liar. No, some good games, but he was often caught, as was Josh, turning the computer off and, like... 
when a bad result went his way before no, we had a chance to save no. it and after the player. No, what Joe used no, to, was the worst. No, what Joe used to do, like, <laughs> pull the used plug. To, used to be like, say, we were Lazio and Milan on, on the old champ man. Say, do you want a brew, lad, or do you want a cup of tea? I thought, yeah, go on. And then, where's he go downstairs? I think he fucking never normally offers to me a cup of tea. What's he doing? <laughs> Next minute, the lecky go in the house. Yeah. <laughs> after, he, after he'd been knocked out of the chair. Oh, hey, 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 that's his own what's sticks. Going on? His own sticks. And he'd come worse. up and go, oh, I'd make him a cup of tea. Lad, lad, lad the lecky's go- gone. I'm like, I know you just turned it off, you cunt. No, he'd go, uh, he'd make him a cup of tea. No, you know, the lecky goes. We used to have the lecky cards where you put the finger in, it's a fiver in it. So yeah. they go. Like, yeah. you, what can you do about it? You just go. You haven't got your lecky on 24 yeah, 7. Just just put the little cards in. And your ma wouldn't put all the cards in because if someone left the lights on, then it wastes the card down, so you'd only put what you needed in. Occasionally it would go, but also I'd go down after making a cup of tea and I'd come back up and we'd just start a new game and he'd, I'd go, right, you sort your team out. He'd go, yes, I'll sort my team out. And they'd be like bids in for players. My players would be unsettled because he'd put bids in and cancel them. All my equilibrium of the team culture's gone. I'm like, what's happened here? Where's the makeup brew? Like, the, the, the skull, skullduggery that yeah, went on. The dark uh, hearts. Uh, yeah, the, the day. And if you had a big result, boxing. you'd have to make sure you'd save it straight away because you go, fucking that leggy goes yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> that leggy goes kicked in again. Yes. Um, but they were great days and you built up your football knowledge. I mean, that's a hell of a finish. I'll, I'll, I'll have to, uh, I have to Kane Botman because he should empty that, but no, remember, remember, that's a hell you, of a finish. Remember when we were kids, you stay in ours and you went Fulham in the championship and like I was going to bed at like half 10, 11 o'clock I was knackered and he was like just finished this last game and I woke up at like half 7 in the morning he was still sat at my computer like that full on <laughs> in the championship I said like it's about half 7 in the morning what are you doing just got just in the Champions League fire and left the full it's when you got on a good run is it in champ man <laughs> when you got on a good run it was it, 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 yeah, you, you could take days time, you could yeah, lose days long, on yeah. that I made up and never played it as a fucking adult yeah I know but like you built your football knowledge off it because you you learn to all the cheap young players and and to be fair because they crowdsourced the data, they they unearth lots of like I remember finding Arjen and Robin at uh, Groenigen, no doubt there'll be lads on here who've got all like Julia Sagahawa, Chuck Nwoko, no we could be here, like, yeah, yeah. Um, Mads Jorgensen, I had me? Martin Palermo, <laughs> Martin Ma- Palermo, I got Vincent Company from Anderlecht as well. Vinny Company, yeah, yeah, used to come good for you. He was on, he, he was, was sent to mid on Anderlecht when Michael he Duff used to play with us at Burnley. He used to get him off Cheltenham for about five grand, and you, he always came. Yeah. You could get like yeah. twelve years good service. He'd be worth about no, twelve million. No, he was a great yeah. one on the end. The ones when I was I played at ten years. John Flech, John he was Flech. just coming in. When he was sixteen, yeah. fifteen, sixteen. He was like I now. Think, now any, you need a fucking business degree to fucking play them. Is that much going on? I've got the new one, me. It I is even waste time so detailed. It. It's is ridiculous. It? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, they're in here, Newcastle. You can do the oh, training schedule. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. Livermento's ex Chelsea in it, so it'll be interesting going back. Like They've obviously let him go to Southampton, yeah. but he'd be wanting to do well here and show them um, they should have let him go. Yeah. yeah, we could sit and talk about champ man for the whole podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. football manager. But that was that was your education. Like as, as much as we watch football and soccer Saturday, you know, sorry, soccer AM and footy focus, which have obviously been gone now. Well, um, now, now they've got the as I say they've 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 um, they've infected the, the FIFA the realistic the most realistic playing game FIFA has been affected with the nonsense. There was so, just there was a story of the biggest one the biggest chap man success was Bobby Firmino. He went to Germany on the back of the who play Hoffenheim was it? Yeah, Hoffenheim, on, the, on yeah. the back of their scouts playing chap man Bobby Firmino and then ended up at Liverpool and win the lot. And, and I swear to you, yeah, the it? amount of players you got on to early that came through on Champ Man, like, are ridiculous. So, I'm not saying they all worked out, because they didn't. Javier you know Saviola. Well, there was, you, you, you just built up this knowledge of, of world football via this game that you played. And as I say, you know, we, we had many a late night on, on that, many yeah. a sleepover uh, where we... Uh, <laughs> did, where you ever, we... did you ever meet the lads who... Who created the game? Ah, yeah, Miles Jacobs. Man City fans, weren't they? No, no he was, he's a big Watford, Watford. fan, Miles. Yeah, he, sends yeah. Me, he still sends he me it every year. He used to get it a couple of months before it would come out, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he still does. He sends game. me it. Like, I've got four kids and I have, I just haven't got two days to get, yeah. to, get, to, get a, to get a team out of uh, the conference and <laughs> into the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the kids today are going to be into it. They're not going to be into it. They haven't grown up on it. We grew up on it because we were like Commodore 64 or Amiga 500 or whatever. Yeah, FIFA with all the ultimate team and then aren't they? So they, we were they, yeah, they're getting their Chant taste man. out of FIFA. This is why I'm saying about the women having the players on there. And I know people have been arguing, going, well, there's men players who are dead. Yeah, but Johan Cruyff was on. once those stats when he was once, and so was Rude Cullen, and so, yeah. were, so was George Best. They were once that level. Uh, Sam Kerr isn't. Mm. Mm. And that's a mad one, because I imagine any footballer with Sam Kerr's profile had done what 
Sam Kerr's done, or allegedly done, with where she's called the copper, allegedly a, a, a white something. Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly. Can I say that any more times? Allegedly. Allegedly. Please say it. You know, it'd be all over the papers, and because of this rise in women's football, there's a silence about it. I'm like, hang on a minute. This is... One of the best players in the world. This is a, a, a current leading women's WSL player ac accused of racially abusing a police officer in his country, and there's no noise about it. Like, Mason Greenwood's voicemail got released, and, you know, the, the lad's career's been changed, I reckon, sadly. Yeah. Tonight's guest was meant to be, weirdly, Trevor Sinclair. Let me down at the, at the last minute there, bit of, or a bit of a cross-communication. Uh, so, Trevor's meant to join us tonight for the game. But again, Trev's had a, a similar thing with, with a, uh, yeah. a taxi driver. And I'm like, hang on a minute. like he, He's lost his career. He got cancelled off Talksport and all that. And, and there's nothing happened here because this is a woman. I'm like, it's double standards. Mm -hmm. like. I also asked, just for the... Um, so uh, when, when Trev let me down, I thought, who's going to get Newcastle? Ryan Taylor over the wall. Tails is coaching tonight. So I thought, Bradley Orr, play for Newcastle, my good mucker. I had a dinner book for tonight. He said, I'll cancel it. I said, no chance, lad. Listen, we, we, we can do it without you. And then I, I went to Flano. I thought, Johnny Flan got no connection to Liverpool, uh, to Chelsea or Newcastle, <laughs> but I thought Flan will be good fun. He, he's, he's a good square. Like, and he's coaching again tonight. So we will try and get players on. As I say, I think a lot are scared. Like, I had a great conversation with Michael Richards today for like half an hour. Brilliant. I'd love to get him on. It, it would be gold dust if he got him on. About race, about the women's game, about commentary, about um, loads of things. Um, I also had one last week with Dwight York after I tweeted about the, uh, the, the Darren Lewis CNN piece about black managers not getting enough airtime. I had an hour on the phone with Dwight. Again, would have been box office. So I'm hoping these people are, are ready to come on the podcast and talk about it because I think there's proper issues we need to discuss that have an even wider range of reach into the society. And as footballers, we've got to use our platform and, and our influence to break down these barriers and get these barriers broken down. And, and one of them, unfortunately, is we have to protect men's spaces. We have to protect men's mental health. And that means clearing these not qualified, not good enough women out of positions that are, are, are men's jobs. Yeah. And if we don't do it, you know, I'm turning footy off left, right and centre because of this woke. You know, and the, the losing me, and from my interaction with people, the losing... A lot of people, because these people are going, you're absolutely right. You, you're right, what you're saying. Maybe the way you're saying it, maybe the terminology, but your, but, but your message, we agree with you. And the message, again, I have to reiterate it, is we want the best people for the job to get the job. But again, the terminology, it does, does, well, would it really matter how you said it, as you said before? Would it, it, If you said it nice or not, it, you'd, you'd still get double-barreled, wouldn't you? Well, there's a famous thing of... Um, attack the message and not the messenger but with me they can't attack the message so they just attack the messenger and they, you know you, you know that Denby ladies woman thinking she has the audacity to like seriously question my credentials as a footballer like just the the, the sheer arrogance of her position um, is, is staggering but also I think well hang on she's actually shy because she's only playing for Denby they must be terrible and I watched the goal she scored that she claimed she scored Ooh. which puts the worst corner in you've ever seen Gets to the rebound, the grass is like that. There's fucking snakes and tigers in the grass. <laughs> and then she crosses it to the back back post, like Miss hits it, and it hits the post and goes in. But a level with you. I think the goalie who's playing for the women's team has fell out with the with Don Corleone because she's had fucking lead boots on. She's about to get launched in the old in, in the she couldn't jump, she had concrete boots on. Um or she was she was like stuck into the floor. Like it was, it, it was like lowest, lowest Sunday oh, League man. footy you've ever seen. And um and she's buzzing off it, claiming it was a legitimate goal. It's Chelsea all over these, you know. Did you, you say you fancy Chelsea Campbell? Uh, yeah, I did, but I've done, gone too, too fancy goals. Looks I mean, better yeah. I've done Chelsea, but Looks on strong. me. All right. I, I, I ended up going 3 2 Chelsea. I just thought there'd be goals. At least there'd be goals. I, I did think it would be. Um, I, just couldn't, I can't see Newcastle winning here tonight, and, and obviously the early goals kill them, but. Chelsea have sort of had a little bit of a resurgence over and Newcastle have had a dip. It's one of them. It's it, it, That's it, why everyone fancies Chelsea, because they just think, yeah, you're gonna win. I mean That's foul. Look, Someone it, in the chat just said cheap. that he thinks we're having the opposite effect on the broadcasters and that there seems to be more women on since not, that's we've nonsense. started. I don't um, think that's no, true, mate. That's I think that's no, less 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 like, Someone said that to me the other day, and I'm like, do you know what? I, 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 can, I can see the logic. If you haven't been watching it before and now we've piqued your interest, you'll be more aware of it. 
I was kind of sleepwalking through it a little bit because I was managing, I'm coaching, I'm like, it's fucking none of my business. And it's only really when I've stopped that I've really paid attention to it. And then the more, you know, flack I've copped, I'm like, I need to be right. I need to know, like, my onions here. And the more I look at it, the more I go, yeah, we're absolutely on the money. This needs calling out, unfortunately. It's, it's, it's 100% <laughs> right that the bigger games, you don't see any box ticking. They get the best for the best for the best games of rugby and in football. You see the... You, you wouldn't get uh, a box tick happen in the Champions League I final. I just don't get why we don't go. Right, I'll tell you what, we'll have an all-female commentary team, a presenting team, and you can press the red button and get it. That's what you want. Or we've got the actual women's footy channel here, and it's Sky 406, like the or 40, 419, or what the, whatever. They've got loads of fucking channels. And let's see how many people actually pay for subscriptions oh. to watch a women's football. I reckon it'd be... I reckon our Patreon has got more subscribers <laughs> than the women's WSL will get if they, if they run their own channel tonight. <laughs> and we've only just started. Should we have um, a little touch on the footy of the weekend? All right, let's have a touch of it. Like, the game's going to be a little it's, bit end-to-end. Good, yeah, good game right. to watch. Yeah, it's I mean, not bad. You, you can see with your own eyes. You don't need us talking um, about what you're watching with your own eyes. Um, weekend's events. Yeah. Big game, obviously. Sunday, Liverpool, City, City. fair result. I'd say it's a, a, a fair result, even though we feel like we should have had a win the second half. If you asked me at the start of the game, I'd have took 1-1. One, one. Second half, I was ne- I didn't want, I wouldn't wouldn't have took that 1-1. One, one. I, I said, we're going to win this, and I felt we should have. They had that one shot with Jock with the post, but... Um, it went right back to the fucking keeper. It went right back to the keeper, could have gone anywhere. Could have yeah. gone anywhere, one of them shots. But I think I was disappointed in City more than anything. I thought they were... We were, we were there for the taking. We, we, our team, as I said, our back five, including the keeper, only one's first team. The rest are all being pushed in a little bit. So yeah. you look, if City's looking at that, if I'm Kevin De Bruyne at Haaland, I'm going, right, I'm, I'm going to be all over these today. They, they just didn't get a sniff. I, I agree with you. When I seen the teams, I was like, it's men against boys, yeah. And, and look, I've, I've had a few, you know, I've, had, I've watched a few of them lads come through over the years because you monitor Liverpool's loans and obviously Jarrell Quanta was with us at, at Bristol Rovers yeah. uh, last season. Um, and to see City virtually full strength, you know, like they might argue uh, Grealish or, but like I'm like City had a good side and and an half decent bench to be fair. Liverpool clearly had, you know, Several. some young lads filling in and and trying to do a shift like they have been for the last few weeks and and doing well. Well, I, I thought City started brightly. I thought City started like when them team sheets have come out, City will have been licking the chops. You know, never won at Anfield, but like this is the best. Yeah. chance we're going to get yeah. especially with Salah not starting and Robertson and then I thought Liverpool just grew and grew into the game I thought Endo and Elliot were, were, were you know surprised Elliot when we seen him on the team sheet over Salah but I thought he was excellent especially even when he dropped down into deep in, in, later on in the game I thought Endo was magnificent again I still have to pull that fucking John Cross up at the mirror when I see him oh, that just, was so I don't like him anyway and I know he talks absolute shite he doesn't like me so it's mutual um and he give Endo a six in the League Cup final. What fucking game was you watching, John? <laughs> we get your head out the pro and Sarney. You were watching the a, a player play magnificently in a League Cup final, and you give him a six out of ten. And he, he was. If you actually watch the position, he, he he was peerless on the day. He was the best midfielder on on, on that pitch. Bad cat. He was man of the match for me. From oh, the outfield the player. Final. Yeah, yeah. He, he was he was exceptional, and I thought he was he was brilliant again. And he's brought for me. Another gear out of McAllister. 100%. I think McAllister got a bit of stick early on the Liverpool the gear. Six. Drop down. Now Endo's freed him up a little bit to 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 be that link man. Yeah. I thought Sol- Solazabai was poor yesterday. He's, don't think he's, he was at his best. No, he's. I he don't think they've started the game for a while. Have these Salah or Sabozlai? It's he just looked very leggy and looked very not on not, not on it yesterday. But you know you you got to give it. That's why I called the team to be fair to start eleven. I didn't think he'd start Salah. I thought he'd bring Salah. Up. Put your trigger. Oh. Cole, Cole Palmer's absolutely Can... given Dan Bain twisted blood here. Yeah. That's that's a big big bad matchup for uh, Big Dan. Mm. Oh, yeah. He's a big what it's six foot six. Shots, six, 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 six it's just that he's just jinking him in he? and he's struggling. Look, just yeah. struggling with 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 Palmer's speed. He's of just foot. sent him to Fulham. <laughs> Palmer's um, just got that well, natural like, swagger, Annie. I like him honestly, he's, and, and the fact that he's playing regular. I think he's now starting. <clears> as I say, he probably takes you fifty hundred games of playing regular before you'd even start to showcase what you can do. Mm. I think he's got a big future ahead of him, Cole Palmer, and he's, he's done incredible in a poor Chelsea culture at the minute. So the better Chelsea get, I think he'll just see more and more improvements. I think you'll see him push on and close, close to, to being the England squad. The problem he's got is some fucking good players who are playing in 
in those position. positions. Like he's up against Saka, isn't he? He's going to be up against Phil Foden. And look, he's listen, Jared Bowen. He's good, Jared Bowen. But I, I, I like him. I think he's going to be. He's going to be um, certainly uh, pushing he's Southgate get hard. Better, anyway. And Anthony he's Gordon. O- he's the, only the going to get side, better. Anthony Gordon the other side. So the big talking points from the Liverpool game then. Well, I thought it was a penal- penalty on McAllister at the end. Yeah. And I've watched it back about six times today. And it, I, I've, I've kind of... I can see how it... I thought it was a stonewaller. Mm. At Anfield, you know, you, they're usually given against the opposition. Like, they just start... I mean, even less contact. You think about how many dives... Go Salah's on. done and got pens. Like I know he was diving again yesterday, but you think how many contact. times? Well, you think how many times there's minimal contact and you just get a pen. I thought it was a huge call. Um, Michael Oliver, who I think is one of the better referees, but then you know Michael Oliver was out in Abu Dhabi getting a shilling off the yeah. people who own Man City, and I'm going. I said oh. that he, even if he's not doing it and purposely, it, it could be like a subliminal thing where he's like. I, I, I can't do this I just, in his own. But the, the problem is they've just opened the door to that question because of the way they've allowed the rules to be for referees. Mm. Like they've just opened the door to to people thinking that. Which, let's be honest, there's enough money in the game where our ref shouldn't be going to other leagues I, on, I, on midweeks. I hundred percent think if Michael Oliver's ref in that game, Stuart Atwell's on VAR for that game, and we're playing Brentford, and it's the ninety sixth minute. And that tackle happens, we get that pen. Oh yeah, million percent. Yeah, he's just so, shitty. Yeah. He's just shit as undies. There, that, that's what's happened for me. He's shit as undies. I, I can't, I can't disagree. You know, but it's a big call, and also the microscope. And I don't think there was enough where you like no to stonewall. I've watched it back. Doc, who actually gets the ball first Doesn't, and then makes what, contact with him. Watch it back. No, he just gets a touch on it. I've watched it shoulder. times but, this but, but again, I've, I've, yeah, McAllister's shoulder is the ball first onto Doku. But then it's regardless if there's a touch, that's a high foot. And if it's a, a foul outside the box, isn't it? So I'm it, with you. Look, it's a foul outside the box, <laughs> but I don't think it's the threshold of giving a last-minute pen that's going to decide the title. I don't think it's a stonewaller for that. Both feet don't. off the floor, studs, studs in his He's chest. Going for the ball. His Doesn't eyes matter. are constantly on the ball. His foot's above waist height. It's a foul. Outside the box, yeah, but no. I, I don't think I don't think it's it's like you know I don't think he's getting too hard. I, I could, if it's given, I could see how people go. I yeah, see how it's given. That's for as a Liverpool fan, we had the older guard basketball issue the other week when he had to pat the ball down the box to get the penalty. That's worse for me. But you've had one. the Nos Forest one where you've had a bit of a rubber de green <sighs> as well. I know the Spurs one you still are on about, but you've also had more scrub. The Nos than... Forest one that was that was two minutes before the goal. I know, but I'm just saying you you, you get some go for you, some go against yeah, you. We usually have... they go for Liverpool. Usually, no. you get no, you get more no. go for than against you. Oh come on, you don't lad. And you don't come on. I think Liverpool. If you look at Siberia and Everton, go on ESPN. The they do like a, a, um, a VAR table, yeah, net table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're second bottom. Right. So, like, for us, the top, they've had the most VAR overturns go for them. We're second bottom this yeah, season. Not, not so much on about the VAR. Someone VAR said Carl Moore needs to take his Liverpool goggles off. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Not, not about disagree. the VAR returns. I'm talking about in terms of just general I know what decisions you mean. that go for you. Like, little fouls, little where you go, but we, we wouldn't have got that, but Liverpool and Anfield get it. I know what, I know what you mean, but still, as I said, if that oh. wasn't Man City making that foul in the box in that, and it was a, a lesser team... We get that pen, so yeah, it's and, the and again, just but again, that that could have been that could that decision could could decide where the title goes. And I think Michael Oliver's gone. I haven't seen enough. Of, of, I'm not having that as enough to decide the title because he's a good ref, but he's a strong ref. Like I, I don't uh, like. I get he's opened himself up to Abu Dhabi. I've got to him, and I don't think he has. I think he's a proper ref. I think he's a proper proper good ref. And I, and I don't for one minute think he, he think... could be corrupted. All right. Now I'm saying to you. Atwell's then in the VAR studio and he's got to see something clear and obvious to overturn it and he's going to decide the title. Bear in mind, Atwell, do you know where he was the day before? Referee in Southampton. Matt Letizia was nailing him, saying he is fucking terrible, he's ruined the game. We've won two, two, We've won the game and he's crap. And he's tweeted, I can't believe his, his reward for being the worst ref of, of, of Southampton in the Championship is to be VAR at the biggest game in the country tomorrow. Well, the, 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 what Atwell was saying to the ref was... Doc who's played the ball, Doc who's played the ball, Doc who's played... He said it a couple of times, this is what we know from the VAR, and Doc who playing the ball is irrelevant to the foul. If he touches it or not, it's absolutely... Irre- Doc who could kick the ball 40 yards up in but the not air. not every contact's a foul. No, but a, a studs to the chest is a foul. 
oh come on, he's kicked the ball. But like, you said it kicked was a foul before. I thought it was a penalty, and like I thought it was based it's, on, it's, and I've watched it back. It, it, I still think it's a pen. I'm with you. I think it's a pen. But I'm saying not every contact is a penalty, and, and also I can see how it's not been given. But all I'm saying was Stuart Atwell in the VAR is telling the referee, Doc, who's played the ball. I get that. So that's. As as a rule, that's irrelevant. All right, and I did tweet. So I thought it'd be three one City. I thought City would win the game. Um, I was obviously wrong on that. In terms of, I thought Liverpool, although they only drew, I thought it was a moral victory. I think Liverpool will take a lot more out of that than just the points. There'll be, you know, the young kids yeah. going in. They all grew. I thought the keeper made some great great saves again. I think all the young kids uh, covered themselves in glory. I text young Jarrell last night to say. Uh, He's only the best fucking striker in the world. Him kidding, you know, five, six games in, you've put him in your ass bin. Yeah. I know you've got, you know, Virgil back to his best alongside you, which helps, but also you've got Connor Bradley one side, who's a young kid learning his trade. Oh, Keller behind, who's one a one young left, kid yeah. playing his trade. You know what I mean? So mm. um, to, to shackle who's the most potent striker on the planet at the minute and reduce him to virtually nothing, he I had thought one, was incredible. Ha- Haaland had one touch in our box all game. It's nuts, that. Yeah, I so mean, it, it, Kwanzaa, go on, go, go, go back to it, the minute. Kwanzaa, the interesting thing for me was this is how funny football is. And um, when I was at Bristol Rovers, we obviously got took over by uh, new Kuwaiti uh, geniuses who uh, know the club, <laughs> know football like every, like like, uh, like 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 none of us do. And um, we were we were mutant whether we would because uh, Jarrell came to us in the January and played from January to the end of the season. And, and we had the baptism of fire, you know, in our team. He was learning on the job and done, done admirably in. A tough, tough period, but showed a lot of character and a lot of uh, traits you're looking for if, you, if you're going to be a top player. I, so he goes back to Liverpool and we're mutant. We might take him back because we think we'll get the benefit of the first six months we've had. And that crazy guy's like, no, he's not good enough. I'm like, well, <laughs> not good enough. So every time I see him play for Liverpool's first team, I'm tempted to text him to say, fucking, we ain't good enough for fucking Bristol Rovers by your fucking crazy definition. How does that, but he plays how, for Liverpool's first team. How does the loan programme work, lad? Would you be in constant direct, uh, like direct communication with Liverpool about his no, performances, so, his developments? So we'd, or... go, we'd go and watch the youth teams and I like players and obviously it's hard to get access to them because, you know, they, 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 they'd rather loan them to like Holland or development Scotland because it's a bit easier in terms of, and they get a bit more exposure and obviously they get more money back for the loan wages that they've got to pay. But occasionally we do get our hands on them. Obviously, Elliot Anderson's on, on, was on loan at us. He's on the bench for Newcastle tonight, just back from injury. And obviously, Quanta was with us last year. Um, and there's, there's, there's like a, play, a person from the club who's their loans manager who'll, who'll interact with you. Usually, if they're playing, they'll just speak to the player. Are ah, you happy? I was saying, and I see you playing in the game. They don't really come to us. But every every now and again, you know, we, we'd speak to them to say, listen, really pleased him. His attitude's been great. You know, he, he hasn't been playing so much recently, but in the next couple of weeks, he might get in the team, you know, or he's really struggling, you know, for whatever reason, or he's been unlucky here or whatever it is, but we always keep them in the loop in terms of the progress. If they're not playing, usually they pull them back at the first opportunity. You know, the other point of them being out on loan is to get the exposure and play. And as I say, you know, Jarrell's gone pretty much from playing in a Bristol Rovers side that was struggling in League One and, 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 um, um, scrapping, you know, to, to, to establish yourself in the division, to playing in the biggest game in the world, yes, the, and handling the best player in the world easily, <laughs> yeah. and it just shows you how quick it can happen. Do you know what I mean? Like literally, that's that's the beauty of football. Like it, you could be in the right place at the right pe- period and have the right skill set, and it drops you away and you're gone. Like yeah. you, you know, you don't look back. And as I say, young Elliot was one of them. His, his progress has been rapid. Obviously, s- slowed down by the injuries just had recently. And, and Jarrell's another one. And if you're playing for Liverpool's first team, a Shaq and Ireland, Ireland, what's the next step for that? You're fucking playing for England. Mm. And no, he's got a, every attribute that you'd need. Like, 100%. And he's only going to get better. Like he's, The more he plays, he's an absolute baby. Yeah. Liverpool fans asked me, did they think he was good enough? Blah, blah. And I said, answered the tweet yesterday. When I was like, yeah, I knew he was good enough. I did, But the only thing I did, I knew he was good enough. I knew he was going to have the ability. I knew he was going to have the attitude. You know, That's why Liverpool have signed him. And he, the clock loves him. Come on, but I didn't come on. think he'd do it as quick oh. as what he has. Yeah. I thought he might have need to go back out on loan, have another 12 months just playing, maybe even going six months in League One, six months in the champ, and then be around Liverpool's team. But because Liverpool struggled last year in the Europa League, he's obviously kept a load of the kids in. And I think the, the club will benefit for that for the next 10, 12 years. Because well, even if you don't get in Liverpool's first team, you're going to sell them like you did with... Nat Phillips and all the others and, and oh, spin a profit. He's, mad. he's he's head and shoulders with Nat Phillips. I know, but I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like yeah. he's got 12 million off Stuttgart for Nat Phillips or 10 million, yeah. didn't he? Like, but like, Quan said to be fair, it's like I think there was a, I think Klopp tried to sign a centre back last summer, 
So we would have had Conce, we would have had Van Dijk, Canate, Matip, and another. Yeah, another, yeah. Uh, and he, he didn't just, he didn't get that played over the line. The Spurs centre half was one of them. That what's his name? The, yeah, the big, the big Germany, fast kid. Yeah, Van der Veen or something. Is it? Van yeah, so there was him mentioned. There was a couple mentioned, and I think Van uh, Klopp's just gone. He has that kind of mentality where he has him, him, or him. Oh nah, I'm not gonna go down the line. So like be six, seven choice. So, we, so like Hendo, you mean? <laughs> yeah, like Hendo. No, Hendo was our third choice, so it's not really like a. But we needed someone in there, and, and it's p- p- worth the genius. Like, but oh, I'm saying, so Quanta sort of that. by by default has become our fourth choice, and then by default with Mata being out for the season, and then Canate being injured quite a bit, he's come into the team loads, and he's just shone. Yeah. It's just like I'm not saying it's luck because he's earned his place there. But I'm saying if if it had a sliding doors moment in the summer, you would have got another centre half in. Well, well, Connor Bradley was the same. Obviously, he did fantastic at Bolton, Bolton playing yeah. as a wing back, and and obviously since moving position or not like and getting, getting injured, injured, has opened up a pathway for him. And now I'm away tomorrow. Uh, I'm over in Switzerland at UEFA, finishing off my pro license the next three days with the Northern Irish FA, and I've obviously done my badges with all them. So I've been aware of Connor and, and the mm. high esteem the they've held him in for a, for a period. So to see him do it. Again, came from League One, Bolton last year, and they've just skipped the champ, these two kids, and just gone right into the top <laughs> end of the prep. Yeah. But it can't be done if you're good enough, do you know what I mean? And you're in a good team, obviously, and a great culture, a great club, Liverpool, where clearly you can plug anybody in, and the machine just keeps winning and moving. You know, You've know, you got to be talented as well. But you, well, as I say, you know, Liverpool's team on paper yesterday and in the cup final, like, shouldn't have got anywhere, anywhere near, near it. Yeah. And actually, they didn't, they didn't only do that, you know, Gordon's they were the better the side. I thought Liverpool would have finished the better side against oh, City, which is second half. He didn't have a sniff. City didn't have a sniff. Second half. Done his knee, Someone yeah. said he, he did. He imploded. Has he done his knee? He's on my bet. I couldn't tell We've you how many times him. I have a bet on a bet builder with a player involved, and he fucking come off in the first half. <laughs> oh, he's gone. Yeah, he's yeah. gone. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he's coming off. He's just jumped there. He just jumped. So that doesn't look yeah. good for Anthony Gordon. That's bad news because he's been flying, Annie, to be fair to him. He's been mm. absolutely flying. England as uh, well. No, I, I, my best. Yeah. I haven't seen the challenge. I'll have to have a little look no, back it. No, it was a, a, a innocuous one. Yeah. They're the usually ones where you get hurt, lad. They're yeah. the ones. You seen the Edison one yesterday? That looked a naughty one. Mm. I know it's his own fault. Yeah. Stonewall pen. Ah, he's absolutely killed him, but he goes to kick through and then pulls out last minute yeah, and Edison's got hurt. <laughs> It was never. I had him for a goal as well, didn't I? I've got him for a, for a goal. Oh, yeah. So, on Paddy Power, they do super sub now. Oh, super sub? Yeah. So, Jacob Murphy's coming on. Uh, now, it's, so, if Jacob Murphy scores or assists, he takes over your Andy Gordon. Still get the oh, right. yeah. Which is it's a nice little addition. Most, I've done three bets and he's on all of them. <laughs> That's a blow. Yeah. That's a blow for Newcastle. Yeah, massive. That's a, just, not for just this game. But saying that they're not going to do much this season now, are they? They're no, just... their best is like Europa League or something, innit? Do you know what yeah. I mean? But I'm saying for him, the boy's flying. You know, you, you, you fancy him to be in Southgate's next squad. Do you reckon that's in his mind there? Uh, because he's just walked off looking yeah. all right. Do you reckon if yeah. Newcastle didn't get a shout for the top four, he stays on the pitch there, Gordon? No, no. I think he's I done his knee there. I haven't seen the challenge back, so... The way he jumped... He just walked off, though. No, but the way he, like, twinged when he touched it, yeah, usually, that wasn't it. Usually on the floor there, you, the probing you need are like... They try and you check your ACL they can feel first. It, they can yeah. feel it, like just off what they're no, doing. The ACL, you, you, oh, you, see, them, you see them slide the, the knee to the side, just checking for it. But he, he touched it. The, then the, what they'll do is they put your fingers on the, and and that looks like he's done a bit of a. That could be like I don't want to ligament predict because I'm not a doctor, but it, that that looks like a the twinge. That looks like a medial or something. That like that the way he twinge like that. Mm, yeah. Someone it, just it, asked in the chat what you thought of them again sending off. <laughs> What do you think? I thought straight red, Joe thought yellow. I still think, I've watched it a few times, but I, st- I still think it's just a yellow. Not in a modern game, because obviously you can't fucking touch anyone now, but I don't think it's a reckless, dangerous challenge. I think it's a stupid challenge. I think it's late. I think he weirdly either missed times it or quits on it halfway through. And like, I just think his head falls off and he just goes for him. I don't what? think it's, it's a 2 0. Fir- is it in the first half? Yeah, he's going to be 2 0. His head's no, gone. No, second half. It's a, uh, yes, but it's, it's two 0 His head's gone, and I just think he goes for him. I just think he goes to swipe him. He's one of them where see, I don't them think challenges what, where it, you you go for the player. If you get the ball, it's a bonus. One listen, of them. The, I think he's one thing right I am a fucking expert in is when you go for somebody. And I can tell by his reaction afterwards. I, I think he's just put. It, he's somehow just got his body in a weird angle to make the tackle. Either that the, the, is I can't. I don't even want to try and pronounce the lad's name. Udogi or something. Udogi. Yeah. Udogi. Yeah. Udogi. Is, I don't think he expects him to nip through and be that quick away 
and he's already committed a bit far out to, to smashing into him and taking everything. You know that one where you put him over the advertising order and, and you fucking get the ball and man, that's a great saying. tackle. And oh, I, chance. I just don't think he's realised how quick or sharp Udogi is and he's committed to it and then realised, oh fuck, I'm not getting there. And just got caught in his no man's land because look at it, like he like knees him in the side of the knee. Yeah, he? He, he, he goes through his knee, but I think it's one of them. He do, he's, it looks, he looks so much worse than what it actually was because he does try and play but, the ball. But you can tell it it, it's not that bad. It, it's almost like a dead leg because a doggy jumps right back up to have a scrap with him, yeah. and then obviously and then the lads run over. in. You can tell by McGinn's reaction. I'm like, listen, it's a bad tackle, it's a yellow card, but it, I don't think it was endangering the opponents. I don't think it was worthy of sending him off the park and then giving him another three games after it. Like, not right. every challenge is a red card. Not every, like even if the even if they are a clattering. Not every fucking tackle is a red card. Don't get I, well, I agree with 10 years so, ago. So Edison's tackle on, on Nunes was as bad as John McGinn's. Edison gets a yellow card. Yeah, I see that, yeah. <sighs> True. See that same velocity, innit? Keep us at a... Keep I'd like to say Edison's was a worse tackle. Keep us at a protected, protected species, though, yeah, yeah, But I'm like, if, if it's... Like, That's only a red card. If so Nunes when Mane goes, goes through and fucking does Edison, Mane leaves the pitch. If Edison does Mane... Ma Edison would have left the pitch. High foot, it's a red, so like, red card, so, isn't it? If it's endangered, it's so that was my thing race. with McGinn. And I don't want to see players sent off. You pay your money to fucking watch the best players. St send them off if they're doing crazy shit that needs sending off, but not for every tackle. Like every tackle, even if it's a, a fucking hard tackle. That's a yellow. It's got to be. That's about a fourth time. I don't know if that's four as no, well. No, you're dead right, Joe. Like, a... I always go back to the, the Derby and Anfield this year. Like Bill and Everton, he sends Ashley Young off for those two kind of professional fouls. Doesn't send Canati off. Yeah, just does, but even still, then it's a Merseyside derby. It's a massive game. You know, there's going to be more tackles to come. Yeah. After 20 minutes, like I think that. the first yellow card was just for a little tug back on the halfway line. But that wasn't that. I mean, that you was have to book him there, don't you, Sterling? Sorry, lads. Yeah. You have to book Sterling there because he's, he's impeded. The Ashley Young never meant those away. It's a good fowler. The Ashley Young first one was soft, but the second one, I don't think that's him being fucking stupid. Yeah, diving mm. in. It's no, yeah, it's, no. It's, you don't, you're on a yellow card in the derby. Yeah. Don't fucking do that in the box. Definitely. But I know what Josh is saying. I just think the could have Play the game. It's entertainment at the at the same time, but yeah, like, play the mean. game. Just let but, them off with yeah, one more. Kill the game. Game. I think they, I th I think they should have put Elliot Anderson on here, Eddie. I think that's Elliot's natural position, a little bit higher up where Murphy's come on for Gordon. Yeah, I I, I would play him higher up, but obviously Eddie's a Premier League fucking manager. You, you rated him higher, didn't you? I, I I like him further up because you know what the kid's got. He's got this ability to slow down in the box. He goes cold and goes cool and slows down. It's the rarest thing I've ever seen. People panic. Even the best panic and speed up, but he's got this rare quality of he fucking he goes ice cold. The closer you get to the goal, yeah, and he's got a lovely chop. He can finish off both feet. You seen the header he scored yeah. for us seven 0 He's mm. like a fucking like Cristiano at the back post. And the higher up you get him, I think I think he's capable of getting your goals and assists. Mm. Ed Ed's been using him as a in the, the midfield, midfield three, yeah, and, yeah. and he's used him around and obviously. But I'm looking at that going. That is for me. It's going to be tough for him because Anthony Gordon's in that slot now and Joe Linton. But I, I think that's where that, that like that's where you'll get the best out of him. Oh, yeah. well played. Maybe one oh, he's done ever so well. Just, Maybe one too many. There's going to be a few yellow cards in this game. You can always see. But I think... Oh, how much were you? Oh, come on, you can't. <laughs> he doesn't know how much he is, does he? He doesn't know how much he is. You just play... You're like, whether someone's worth 105 mil or fucking 5 mil... You're having it on a Saturday. Like, that's where I think Liverpool benefited yesterday because the kids can just come out. They've got nothing to lose. Mm. Liverpool used yesterday to go, what do you expect? We had Keller, uh, Bradley, Gomez, mm. Kwanzaa, yeah. Elliot. Yeah. You know, mm. you've got your out straight away. So the kids now, they've got nothing to lose and everything's again. So they'll, imagine what they're like this morning. Like, wait till fucking Salah comes back. Wait till Cunyate. Wait till Alisson's back. They're going to be like, <laughs> Liverpool's training ground's going to be fucking bouncing because the whole team, yeah. the whole club's the whole squad, connected. Yeah. City are going to be on the floor because they're going, fucking hell, we never got beat, but we fucking half, we've half, we've half lost we seen a the momentum of, to Liverpool there. We've seen a couple of cracks in City, you see, which I think Arsenal should take advantage of, and I'm sure our, our Teta will, where De Bruyne is kicking off a pep. I've never seen that ever. Someone have a go at Pep when they've come off. When De Bruyne came off and he's had a little moan at Pep. Oh, no, Aguero used to do that quite no, regularly. I, uh, this, this team... Yeah, but I think I think I, like I don't know, they've had a few ding dongs, haven't they? I, I think I think it was the right, I think it was the right call as well. The Bruyne was, was saying right to, to him, listen, you might agree, you shouldn't answer your manager back. The Bruyne is saying to him, pretty much, what the fuck are you doing, taking me off? I'm the best, one of the best players in the world. This game's on a knife edge. This could be the title. What the fuck are you taking me off for? Who did he put on Kovacevic? And he done well. Kovacevic no, no, what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. he's he's he thinking I'm a game winner. I will win the game. Yeah, but he wants to win the game. Know, put, yeah. And we'll talk about it in, in a sec. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's Come in on, here, Isaac. 
Fucking good player, him, isn't he? Finish. That's, That's a some goal, like, you know. Great finish. Did Jacob Murphy pass it to him by any chance? Do you know, as soon as he gets in that <laughs> position, like, as soon as he gets in that position, I don't know why you just like, this is a great angle for him. He's a great His finish. finish the outrageous, you know. Uh, Do you I know am what? You and Gordon's gone off, you know. <laughs> 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 His finishing is uh, outrageous. That's a great goal. But again, what's Gusto doing here? What He's the crapping, fuck? The told you. No, I don't think he is. He's just a young He's kid making mad decisions. Full Tom Murphy. Gumaras. 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 Bruno. Gumaras. Oh, Gumaras. He just, Gumaras. He just Gumaras. used the defender. Yeah, screen, Watch him yeah. use the defender. It's great. I love this. He's this little stutter. Said that, oh, it's great. Yeah, just use the defender as a screen. When Gumaras yeah. wasn't fired on and they signed the, him. The big thing for me like, is, I know. why not throw you down on Isaac? He's fucking incredible. Boots in Liverpool. Season. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, I think no. he's missed a trick there. Definitely. Because he was flying at Sosie. So 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 I wouldn't swap him oh, for Nunes now. Oh, Nunes is coming good, but he was flying at Sosie. I really like him. He's better finish than Nunes. No, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's Diaz yeah. for me. Honestly, he's it's, a better player. It's Diaz. Yeah, it's I like Nunes yeah. as well, by the way. I, I, I think, like Nunes, yeah. but if you're offering me Isaac or, or Nunes, it's, it's, that's it's the stat you see on like, Nunes. Ha Harlan's been offside once this season. Nunes been offside 25 times. Well, Ian Wright's analysis on him was interesting before, saying, is he just an headless chicken? Because that points to, does he know the fucking offside rule? He runs offside or he's going too early. But again, you've got to have that... Is that sink playing regularly with the team underneath mm. you to go. As soon as that goes in there, I used to have it with Andre Gray, obviously on a lesser scale. I'm like, Dre, ball comes into me, yeah. Don't do if you come to feet, you're not getting it. Yeah. So you might as well get on your fucking bike, because that's where it's going. And Daishi would encourage us to play into certain areas. And it played really well to Andre's skills and he made them really effective. Nunes is a fucking nuisance. Yeah, he's, he's a nuisance. He's an on he the is. shoulder striker. And if Liverpool service him correctly, I think he could be even more productive than what they're getting, but clearly he's got to work on his relationships with the lads underneath him and his time and a runs to not be mm. offside that much because he's costing himself really good opportunities, opportunities by shooting his bolts a bit early, you know, premature ejaculation of the uh, the <laughs> run to fucking yeah. get in there because you're, he's so giddy, he's so raw, to, he wants to do so well. But I think there was a there was an offside you see where you're just thinking, you just that's just fucking stupid he was left. Yeah. He was one yard in their half. Yeah. And you just you didn't need to be there. He's at got all. the pace to not. He, he, so, like, and that's from shit. the keeper, from Kelleher. He's still only what is he, twenty four, Nunes? Mm. Twenty yeah, twenty so he's so still on your baby, yeah. I mean you should know it, but also it's just I, I think in playing Palmer there. Oh, bad touch. Oh my god. Oh, oh how's he done that? Offside. Botman has had an absolute uh, Botman since I said he's one he's world offside. class. Botman has a stinker again here though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could be screws himself no, into the ground. No, I think he is. No. Could but there's two close. runners, whether it's him offside or Sterling. Botman has just Botman been sent to the yeah. echoes there, look. Like, what can you do? Done a, he's, done his, he's done his best Kyle Walker yeah, impression he's, off, he's off. but watch Botman when he gets in the box he's off luckily for fucking Botman here he took a terrible touch here though yeah, yeah. he's, he's not chance, the best watch. either though is he Jackson <laughs> just gets stuck in the ground L listen it, he could have done with that yeah. as you know Josh you were a striker fucking goals settle you down Nunes running the team getting that price tag off his back getting the fans out going do you know what even if you fucking don't score as long as you run your bollocks off I'll have you then winning a pen getting a few goals yeah. being a big game player It'll take him a bit to settle and go, do you know what? I deserve to be the Liverpool leading the, the what, line. What, what Liverpool fans do, and I know they'll say this, they'll sing his name, whatever, regardless. Mm. They'll chant and they'll back him to the Hilton Nunes. So he's not got an issue with that, that being like loved at the club is side. Is that Mudrick, is that? Or Gallagher, was that Gallagher? Gallagher, Gallagher, Gallagher yeah. It seemed like he lost half a yard. He's, he's usually good. Unless he's really quick. Liv well, Liveramento is really quick. But he just didn't seem to close any right. ground on him there at all. I think Newcastle go on to win this, mate. Do you? Yeah, being finished the first half stronger. I mean, I, I still think there's a few twists and turns in this year, especially as you know, like both of them, there's no real pressure on either of them, you know what I mean? They're not like, so they're going to go for it. Both teams are going to try and win it because they need to, Eddie Howe's going to need it, otherwise the pressure's going to start building on him and obviously Pochettino's going to need it if uh, it helps his project start to yeah. bed in a bit quicker. Um. That was but interesting, it's... Pochettino, what he was his comments yesterday, wasn't it? Saying I'm never quitting and this is what I'm doing and I'm committed to this team and all that, which I think is probably good for the Chelsea players reading it, because as you said, they are only young kids, aren't they? I know they're expensive kids, but they are only young kids still and they regardless of what they pay for them, the bad likes of Lavia and Casado and that they've still and they've still got a lot of learning to do. And well, they're not was... gonna get in Europe this year, so you're saying, right, you're gonna have a chance to, as I say, get a few out, maybe get 
couple of adjustments in mm-hmm. that just give you the final bits. And then next year, not being in Europe, you're going to have to fucking get in Europe. Otherwise, I don't think that's going to... You can't... We're still building. We're still yeah. building. There's got to be some tangible... You know, I think Pochettino is a good manager. But again, next year at Chelsea, you can't fucking finish at 7th, 8th. No, I think he's got, like, no, I think he's got next you, year to got do. You've got to be pushing. Maybe Four. finish 4th, fourth, 4th. Fourth. Like make a chase for fourth, but yeah. finish fifth or sixth off the back of it. You know mm. that's where Chelsea should be. Yeah, that's the, that's what be. their aim is next year. No, Chelsea fans won't agree. Eleventh. They'll Chelsea fans will want. Oh, oh look at that ball! ball. What a touch! Oh, oh, that's a great defense. No way! The offside. Oh, oh no, Willock. Willock. Oh, Willock. Good player. Yeah, yeah like Willock. Willock. Goal, Just getting back from injury. Yeah, like Willock. <clears throat> I mean, he, he had the spell in even under Steve Bruce a bit where he was can't. Like, He's on. Well on, yeah. Great ball. He's onside. So. Lucky he never fucking so, put it in the net. So shouldn't he be given the corner now? No, he shot. It wasn't yeah, it? Wasn't the defence? So, anyway. Yeah, it looked like a defence. No, looked like a. Um, I thought he should have gone left footed there rather than right footed. But I don't until you're in that moment and you're running through. If he's in a run of ten, twelve games, he he, he takes his touchdown and buries that. Yeah, a little he's bit of confidence. Players. I think this is his second game back. Is it or his third? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, it was definitely. I think it's his first start. How many scored against those? Was it last season? He's I've seen like that. I've seen six, six or seven. Yeah. With the outside. What, what did you good. think about oh. the uh, the set play goal in the Liverpool game? I thought it was very well worked. I thought it was um, a Pep just being Pep in these little genius fine margins of what he does to does to teams and how he buys it. I think Carragher put nail on the head um, in his description of Liverpool defenders. Set plays. From the Brentford game. So yeah, he he, he's, he's saying how Liverpool defend out swingers to in swingers. They have no one in the box when it's an in swinger and Van Dijk steps up the old step with him oh. and it, and you think they've said to John Stones, he's the least the ball the, chance. Oh, oh man, Adam. Good it's strike. Just got it too good. What do you, it, do you think it, it was all It was it was interesting. Sorry, no. It was interesting that Pep turned around straight away and started pointing at someone on the back of the bench. Now, one of my old analysts from Fleetwood is currently working with City and Pep, and interestingly, they have six or seven analysts, and each one has a game, and then you don't do another game for another five or six weeks, but you just specifically prepare for one okay, team. Okay, yeah. So they have one analyst watching a team for like five or six. Weeks. weeks before, and he then he presents, and then that, he yeah. has another. He cycles out, so the, you know, not only is he the best manager with the best players, but clearly he's got a phenomenal staff. And case in point, then big games are divi- divided or de- sorry decided on the margins. Yeah. And City, I thought, done a number on Liverpool. He did, yeah. But I was looking at it going, what's the difference with that block <sighs> yeah. and and mm. Endo's? All right, Endo was starting from an offside position, but actually. That's a foul outside the box, but in the corners, the pick and roll. We've seen mm. Arsenal who've well, got to the top we, of the league. Well, we've been told U- utilize the set play. We've been told the narrative now is that it, it's it can be the same incident in terms of the block, but it's only given if he's offside, which is makes no sense to me because the the block is the block regardless of he's offside or not. That's the that the obstruction, that's the yeah. interference in the play. But we've been told, well, no, because if he's offside, it's given because he's interfering because he's offside, but. I, it makes no sense to me. I just don't. I'm laying a new rules every day. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, I, I kind of get it if he scores the goal, or if he knocks it down to the fellow who scores the goal. But if he just blocks somebody, I, I, I think you have to give. A, we want to see more goals, and you want to see creative set plays like that. I think both goals were fine, should have stood. But I'm, I was actually saying on Twitter, what's the difference? And they were all going, ah, oh, he's offside. I'm like, obviously, no, he starts from an offside position. But the actual incident is the same. But the blocks, the block. Yeah. And the ref never went as, you know, the, the ref never even. They don't have a look at blocks like that, but then he went back and stopped the game and went back and looked and then went, oh, he's actually offside. So I know Chelsea fans will argue it was the correct call and justice prevailed in the end. Knock that kettle on there. Um, and Please, love. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know justice prevailed because obviously Van Dijk ended up scoring the winner in, 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 a bit later on. Yeah. But also, I'm, I'm like, you have to give some credit, like... To the, to the opposing team for, for, for working on that and putting the ball in the back of the net. So I would have wanted both of them goals to stand. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think what I think, and there's not many players who could have took that corner, what the Bruyne took, like that into that. Just, it, it was literally either needle ball right down, yeah. right down the line and just cut in just before the post. So John Stones, and I said, and he said to John Stones, you're our runner because he's the most unexpected player to be running that near yeah, post. Yeah, sets it. a little block. Yeah, so Aki blocks, John Stones runs behind him, comes across Nunes. And just gets anything he can't and flick it over the keeper. And it was a perfect set play. Well, I mean, well, take well, it off Again, team. I think that Liverpool suffered from not having the big boys in the team there, the men, because Van Dijk signed it organised, oh. spots the Bruyne going out and moves the. Because obviously the outswinger there, you've got a different tonal structure. Yeah. Liverpool have been superb at this. You know, 
it's very much dependent on personnel, by the way, because I've run both models in my coaching career and you can have the best zonal setup, but if you haven't got fucking big, massive yeah. defensive Units. machines, then yeah. the fucking zone's no good. So actually, you know, we used a bit of a hybrid system as well in times, but Liverpool, you know, used this zone. But if you watch it, Kelleher, the young keeper, He's can see footed. everything. And Van Dyke's organising out on one side, and I think Kelleher should have been making McAllister and the lads aware that, hang on, Achie's standing in a weird position here. He's going to fucking set a block Come or a front. So I think Liverpool were caught massively unaware in terms of they didn't think City would run something like that. Yeah, I think it was Ian Wright who said it. He said, Achie's there looking for his keys or something, didn't he? Yeah, it was but just he's acting, like, yeah. He's, he's perfect. playing a role. Yeah, he's just like... Screen. It's just like slowly no one's watching me. I'm just surprised there was no e-petition from the Liverpool fans or no, no complaints oh. online. Usually if a decision goes against you, <laughs> the, the, it might have been worth an e-petition. And a, a, I can't believe yeah. you haven't got one okay. for the penalty. I was, I've thought that was an e-petition this morning, that, that we penalty. We might set one up, let's do one now. Let's <laughs> get the match replayed. Um, right, other games from the weekend. Arsenal getting the job done. Um, yeah. Showing... Ha- Showing what champions do when they win the games later on. I said on it a few weeks ago, I asked what my pick to win the league, didn't I? So I'm still sticking with Arsenal to win the league. I think the City v Arsenal game is massive. It's, I mean, not, not for Liverpool as well. If it's a draw, it's advantage Liverpool. If it's a City win, it's kind of even Steven again. If Arsenal go and win against City, which I think they can do watching After City, is they? Getting injured, I'm like, got yeah. Edison out, they've got. They just looked shaky. They just didn't look like a city of old. They look like if we can get at them with our kids, so to speak, Arsenal are going to get out yeah, there all over. Been, them. You've been, you're going all right. Like you're not shite. I know we're not shite, but I mean we have we, we, we have got a load of youth team players. Yeah, but on also the you're at full Anfield, of which is a fortress for you. So let's be honest. No matter what team goes out there, especially but, in a big game like that, hundred percent. But I've never seen City that bad at Liverpool for but a long also time. Also, you have to give the whole Liverpool. Atmosphere, the intimidation of going to Anfield with what's at stake. Those young lads have grown into the shape because they've got no real expectation that a City are expected to beat them. City have half. The balls have half shrunk at the longer the game's got on because they're like, fucking hell, we might get busier by, you know, Liverpool. Liverpool without the strongest eleven, and we virtually got our strongest eleven. Yeah, I think and when 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 the cat went down with his knee, uh, and he'd be on the ground for a couple of minutes, Anfield just like it, it mm. just lifted. Everyone was on the field, everyone was singing. It was just like electric. It was sort of like, and it does feel onto the players. Oh, and, and, and after that, after that incident, apart from the docker at the post. City were all over the place and it was just like they just yeah. they got a little bit of maybe Pep mentioned something to do with it but he obviously had a little backhanded one with they you know one of our place though have you kind well, of he's right isn't he he's just right. the truth, what I'm it? saying you said it was at, you mentioned Anfield and, and the intimidation of the place kind of thing and it did work so what that did that that is like we always have Liverpool it's a, it's got a, it's a, Arsenal to play or have you just played each other no, twice, it's twice right. yeah. so, so the big one really is when City and Arsenal run each other you'd be fingers crossed open for the draw we've got Brighton we want to draw uh, worst case scenario we're, we're Arsenal win the one of them sit. If City win again, it's 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 all it's open. So you legitimately. City, I know you fancy. Hands. All right, I know you fancy Arsenal. Are you, are you, are you thinking Liverpool, Arsenal, City, the title? Uh, can't pick. I'll just pick one. You've got City. to be City. 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 City yeah. I can't believe he's going against your own team. You're no. fucking honest to God. I don't, I don't know if Everton had half a chance of winning. I'd be like Everton. We're going to win this, and it's Klopp last we're year. Realists. I'm like no. realists. Realistic. You's aren't, when realistic. he's ever realistic, he's, he's had them red tinted glasses on. <laughs> right now, being honest. Um, I think I think that Santa not care themselves. All right. We were just talking about the Arsenal. weekend's big games. All right. So we're talking about the title race. Arsenal. Have okay. it. Have it should have been sent off. So we shouldn't have scored that goal out of the way. What? what? So I, I, I think I, I, that's. If that if Habits wasn't on a yellow, again I think it gets a yellow for that. Mm. It's one of them ones where you're like, it's the high bar, it's it's a oh sh- is that a sending off? It's it's really it's it's yeah, I can see why it hasn't been given as a yellow, I can see why it should have been given as a yellow. But it's one of them ones where it's a ref playing the game rather than the incident. Well, the humans, aren't they? So they are human beings, like yeah. you know, we've got to give them. I think we should need to give them more accountability, more responsibility and take the VAR being able to communicate in their ears off and just say, look, go, if you want to have a look at it, go and look at it. And you don't have this cunt fucking talking to you in your ear trying to what I've said coerce before, you yeah. into making the decision he wants you to yeah. make. You say to the ref, go, and look, go, go and look at that screen and then just so cease, look at it, yeah. cease all contact. Or he can say, listen, can you, you show me it. this? Can you show me that? But the ref, like the rugby, the ref's in charge. Yeah, so he's not He's not got his mate up and Stockley Park saying, but I'll freeze this frame for you just here. You can look at this. I, I thought it was a great ball in by Ben White. I, I thought Arsenal... 
he's been showed very what, well what you need to do if you want to win a league. You need to go and grind one out and get the job done. And, and even when they finished the game, I thought Arsenal had a lot. Like the squad's good. They got a fucking good squad. That's why I fancy the Man City next week. But I just, I just can't have Arteta after the all or nothing. I just <laughs> like when he played the, all the music at Anfield. I'm like, yeah. and he was drawing the finger on the screen. I'm like, he's gonna find a way of fucking the job up before the season's out. I'm just not having him at the club. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, I just can't have him after that all or, or nothing I just, documentary. I, I think I'd hope, not I'd hope, I'd think he's grew since that as a coach and, oh, as, a, 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 and as, a, as a person in terms of like these little tiny things what well, he thinks that could be the fine margin I'm going to play you Slow never walk alone down, I'm going to play you never walk alone while, while we're training but I just got serious Brendan Rodgers David yeah. Brent vibes off him on that documentary where I'm like mm, I just can't I just think you're, yeah. going to find, you're going to find a way like I think the best coaches find a way of getting the job done and I think all the others find a way of fucking it up now I don't want to cane him, but Kevin Keegan, when he done that, and he f- he lost that yeah, fucking, that, he lost that, the title he lost that league then. on that interview. Yeah, that's how finely balanced it is. Pep and Klopp yesterday were playing the mind games. Klopp obviously, and um, we'll talk talk about his interview with Pep saying yeah, they haven't won at Anfield also. Mm-hmm. And then Kyle Walker's done the press today, managing the referee, saying you know he's big he's, call and City are, City are playing every because they've been there, done it, got the t-shirt. The it's problem you've got is, you know. I, I think this Klopp leaving this Liverpool without the top players is building this crescendo, this momentum wave that I think when the big hitters come back, I don't think he's going to be, no one's going to be able to stop you. So I've just got a funny feeling he's winning. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> well, right. I'm definitely going to. Well, all right, so down the right bottom end, right, we, we've covered so, the top we end. Off. United, Sheff then. United after Monday. No, the, the other one is for fourth position, Spurs. I didn't fancy Spurs to win, I feel like. I thought Villa were going to have too much for them, but I mean, John McGinn, we spoke about. But a, but a thought Spurs look like just look fucking phenomenal, outstanding going mm. forward. Hot summers brilliant. Looks back to his mm. best. I think Kane Gowen's just allowed him the space to flourish, getting the armband. Um, and I, I just I, like the, even though I don't think they're going to get in the top four, I actually don't mind watching Spurs now. They're, they're exciting to watch. They, mm. You know, they, he's a gambler. The gaffer, isn't he? That's what he does. He's the, the Pochi he's, he's a he's a he's a gambler in terms of his tactics and in terms of how he sets his team up. And I like line, I, I yeah. don't I don't mind. I like him when he had an interview. I think he fucking talks common mm. sense. Like I think he's just fucking solid bloke. Like. He's just yeah. a straightforward yeah. fella, and he's like no bullshit. But them antipodeans are, aren't they? Them, them, them people who come from Australia and New Zealand, they're, they're just deep bullshit. Yeah, they, they don't give they a fuck. Do they? Like they're not like some of the space cadets you get. They come in, you know, you see them in the rugby and that. They're very matter of fact, and clearly he's getting a tune out of them because Spurs, I think, in the next couple of years could could push on again, but. I still think, think there's some way behind the top um, the top three at the minute. Who do you think gets fourth then if Spurs don't get it? I think Villa are in pole position. I, I really do. I just think... Uh, the, the only problem you have is you and I emulise the teams usually in the Premier League is Arsenal teams were running out of steam towards the end and they've got the Europa League going on and I'm just going, does, does, does that intensity just grind on them and can it be Spurs who be the biggest danger what are they back to within three points after who have they got left they've got Liverpool oh yeah they've got some tricky games they've got City they've got City left I haven't looked at the fixtures but they've got some, they've they've got got some tough games I, I, I think Villa will get it done but also I could easily see Spurs getting to them I don't think United even though they won at the weekend I don't think United are going to get in there I just think no. they're too inconsistent it's too um, shit and then I can't see as I say anyone coming out the pack who's there full of wolves or anything. I just can't see them getting to the stand them mid they're just too far up far away you know Newcastle 15 points behind with the no. game in hand Chelsea two games in hand but I think 16 points behind so, so I just you, think they're too far back I agree I think the fourth Villa I've always, I said that for a while I think fourth Villa down the bottom of the table I think it just depends on this this points thing with Forrest yeah I mean. Forrest are in trouble aren't they where's my phone Can't yeah. you take anyway. my phone now I think I it's think if phone. if this points thing comes out in what date did I say it was it was it early April so if it comes out early April, that follows they're getting this six points. But and if Everton ever, ever yeah. potentially going to get a start of next season, because the noise is like the Premier League have got no no hunger to do Everton twice in a season. Well, it, it could kill them because the momentum, it could, like, you know, getting that points deduction so close to the end, it's fucking take the wind out your sails. So I don't, th- but I think Forest would get it this season. So and so, then the Forest argument would be, well, you're punishing. Us in one season and Everton the next season with the same period of punishments, which uh, then you there's just cans of worms opening everywhere there. Chef United fucked it up. Oh, yeah. Solanke misses a pen, gets 2 0 up. Solanke has a goal disallowed, and then somehow you still manage not to win the game. You're like, how the fuck are we going to win a game? But to be fair, that like 
They won't because of the state of play and the way they've lost to Sheffield. But after Monday night and getting a new arsehole tour for them against yeah. Arsenal, and Arsenal actually backing off, um, you know, I think that's a step in the right direction. You know, you've got yeah. a point on the board, albeit they'll be disappointed. It shouldn't have been free. But as I said, I think they're down anyway. And a similar thing happened to Burnley at West Ham as well, didn't it? Do you know what I mean? Had a chance to win, and obviously on the Sunday Farted and got it. that. That was a massive goal, that uh, Carl Morris goal for, for Luton, late stoppage time. I still at, don't at think it helps them. I still don't. They need, I think they need three points. Every point's, a, every point's valuable, lad, down there. I'm every, telling you, every yeah. point's valuable. It, it, it's going to go down to a point. It, that, listen, that's a, that's that's like yeah. winning as well. Like, when you score that late, oh, no, that's yeah, like it's, winning. It's like, an, yeah, I just think... Um, I think but Bournemouth come back to Bournemouth there. They had 32 shots and 70 percent possession, so they absolutely fucked United. But I mean, they just they, they, so they should they should have won before. They just had Solanke, the stinker. You know, it was one of them games for them. Which I think Sheffield United did a, a poor team. Neto getting injured again. Oh no! Yes, yeah. in Am Amsterdam. Oh, that Amsterdam. Talk about selling them this yeah, summer. That's where you want to see the women there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, in the stands. <laughs> um, another one. I thought the two probably. My candidates for managers of the year, all right? Two of mine, Marco Silva and Gary O'Neill at Wolves. Gary Fucking O'Neill's great, great jobs. The pair of them Gary have done. O'Neill's a great show. Obviously, Wolves won the game, and I think that sets them up to fucking push on and get into Europe. I think they've got a right chance. All right, That'd look. That'd be some achievement, like. The two points off West Ham are doing in seventh, but I I'm think... like, Wolves have, Wolves have turned some good teams over and seem to be going from strength to strength. Like, Fulham are a good side. As Man United found out a couple of weeks back, Fulham have, have a fucking good us, side. They give us a, a good game, Fulham, but I think my man of the year, I think if they do get top four, is um, a Unai Emery. I think oh, yeah, he's... but I'm saying, like, like in terms of budget given to, to them lads, like, Gary, only get the fuck off the telly <laughs> Friday, no one will be watching that. Look at them, they're not even real. Like, it's like a joke, isn't it? Um, and, you know, Gary's gone in there quite late because yeah. of the shenanigans mm. with Lopetegui and just fucking turned like it into gold like fit and you know the kids forgive the pun but like literally couldn't have done if you project it you've gone what a job he's done yeah you know, must, unlucky to lose his job at Bournemouth you must have played against O'Neill quite played, a lot played with him he got yeah. sent off in the playoff final yeah, that's who Gary O'Neill got that's sent right, off yeah. Yeah. Did, he's you him, did you see him going into management when you were playing with him do you know what no I would have thought he'd be more of a physio because he was never out the fucking treatment room Monty <laughs> Burns I used to call him <laughs> fucking every day he went in there he had the ailments and he, he got that well versed in the end you'd walk in and he'd go what have you done? And you'd go, you wouldn't even see the physio. You'd talk to Gaz and Gaz go, yeah, you've done, done X, Y, and Z. And by the time you've seen the physio an hour later or half an hour later, he'd confirm what Gary had said. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was like the fucking doctor in the fucking... And he was, he was a good kid, to be fair, cracking golfer. Yeah. Like, you know, good player into it. But I, I never I never thought I'd see him in that. He never, you know, he had a good opinion on football. But, you know, I didn't see him doing what he's done. I was surprised when I see him take the, the Bournemouth job because Liverpool beat them 9-0, Scotty Parker threw his toys out the pram. And he's thrown in the deep end. And Swan, well. off the back of that, he was harshly sacked. I don't care what anyone says, really harshly sacked, it, judging by Bournemouth being below Wolves in the table. And then he's done a phenomenal job at Wolves. And I'm looking at him now going... Everton? Well, not Everton, no, but like... <laughs> I like not yet, not just not yet. Not just yet, but I mean, he's, like, he, he Wolves, can do that next Wolves step Wolves fans up. won't be happy with that. Like the Wolves, fan, Wolves, are, Wolves are doing all right. Wolves are bigger than Everton. I'm not saying they are, yeah. but I'm saying Wolves no. are doing all right. They are, no. Wolves are all right. <laughs> well... Should you on the table, yeah? Yeah, no, um, I think he could do that next step to like a, a, a wet, uh, and, an and just before we get back to this, there was obviously Brighton beating Forest, which is big for Brighton, but also really big for down the bottom. Yeah, so mm. I think that'd be a blow for Forest. Um, and that's it, really. Burnley fucking being two up and not getting beat by um, not winning the game against the uh, West Ham, they'll United be disappointed. Away, yeah. yeah, be really disappointed. Company under pressure. Do you know? I don't think so. A... I think he's done that good of a job, and he's you know I think uh, he's got <laughs> he's got he's got some he's he's still got something left in in oh. in, in the tank, can he for them? I, I just... mean, it's everyone's under pressure at some point because you've got to stay in the league because the revenue that's uh, attached to it. All right, so we're back to the game now. No changes as yet. What do we reckon second half? Both teams to score. Again, yeah. to score. Both teams to score. And both halves would have been a great. Six play, to you know? one, it was. Oh, oh, You've you just, you just done a goal in both halves. Goal in both halves. Yeah. And who did they, oh, did they get Isaac? Did they say Isaac? I don't know. Who you've done. Got him well, did they have Gordon? I might have had Gordon. You know, still think I went Gordon because he was on pens. I'm think I went Gordon because he was on pens. 2 1 Newcastle. 2 1 have you got for the two? That was my original. 
Well, not it is. I tell you what, Amaron's had that end product to his game, and he that he, he was always getting in good positions, but last year, last he, year, he, was good when, yeah. um, he added that end product. I mean, weird one. Did he come from the MLS? Did he you come had, from American football? You had Isaac to score. Isaac to score. Did I? Mm. Oh, that's even better. Watch your cash out. That's good news for me. I don't £2.63. £2. I had Isaac to score. Oh, that's good. You got Bruno to be carded. Uh, Bru yeah, Bruno to be carded. I just think... And Kai Seido to commit three fouls for none. Did he not have a foul? Oh, he, he got fouled before. But as Josh says, if Newcastle get the beaks in front of yeah, Kai Seido will start charging round. So. Yeah. Great ball. Oh, 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 oh God. God. Yeah. What a ball. That is what is known as the corridor of Day. uncertainty. <laughs> <laughs> Delivered into the corridor of uncertainty. What a you ball that this? is. Now come off his foot. I seen a girl score from here at the weekend. <laughs> Slightly different technique. Slightly Post different technique. Post Slightly different in. length of grass. There's no tigers on this one compared to the tigers on the grass. I noticed one of the uh, one of the two fans lab before asked about about Bruno Gumarish. Yeah. Do you think he's wasted as a as a six? Do you reckon he's more? He should be used more up up the pitch as an eight all the time. I don't think he's got the legs for the eight. I, I just like watching him. He, I, I really he plays that lower position with without really much defensive fucking thought, which is a bit like the way Pirlo played it. Bit of a quarterback. The way, yeah, I mean, he goes and makes the game happen. For he like conducts the orchestra from that deep position. So you want him on the ball. Like now, I think if you play him a bit higher up. I'm not. Some players are really good facing the play and shite with the back to play. Like I, I know I was. I was brilliant when I could see it. Back to play, like in an ten and behind, I couldn't do any of those things. And I look at Bruno and I think he's so much better when the game's in front of him because he's got a fantastic range of passing, and he's so composed and comfortable on the ball. I just think if you put him in the ten, yeah, you might get a few more goals and assists, but I think you'll lose the overall quality of his yeah, contribution yeah. deeper down. But yeah. it'd be nice to see him with... I mean, Newcastle haven't really buddied him up with a kind of defensive like, thinking midfielder mm -hmm. to allow him to go on. Um, and I think since Tonali has got suspended, I think I think they had a lovely little yeah. relationship build and I think he's he's really suffered from Tonali not being there because he would share that lower he load and he'd, he'd, he'd mix bit, and match. Yeah. You know, a little bit like the, 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 we used to play with the fucking number fours and number tens and number sixes and that now. But he used to just be called a fucking boxer box midfielder. That's what it was known as. You fucking make goals and get in the and box you and stiff. you hold the position yeah. and vice versa. And it, you were judged on this country whether you could fucking do it or not. Now, and it was Essie and Makaleli and Lampard, I think, Lang, you know, that More. kind of changed. Deep Mar a man and obviously uh, Gerard had a bit like Gerard would always go and Deep Mar would always stay. Alonso would always stay. You know, and yeah. then, yeah, Mascherano came in there and they had Alonso, Mascherano and Gerard in there to try and give Gerard even more Ma platform. Mascherano coming in with the Makaleli, that sort of changed football in terms of that became a specific role, I think. Well, again, I, I, I remember hearing a lad talk about Bellingham saying he's, you know, number 22 because he's a 4, 6, 8, 10 and all that rolled into one. I'm like... I you mean, just like a fucking boxer box midfielder, like Steve Gerrard was. You want about to? Yeah. Yeah. He's another fucking mean. twenty-two. He's a fucking boxer box midfielder, like yeah. Brian Robson, like fucking yeah. Steve Gerrard, like fucking Rude Gullet, like anyone who fucking played the position with any oh. real class yeah. and authority. Yeah. Like they fucking get both sides of the ball, um, and that's why I don't like all these little wanky words creeping in. Because if they go unchecked, all of a sudden you're like, what the? F what are you on about? You're describing what I know to be this very simply a boxer box midfielder with all this fucking jargon to try and make yourself mo sound more intelligent. And it just makes me think, what the fuck are you on about? Yeah, did Simplicity you, is genius. Did you, did, you, did you change the world a lot in football over time? And there's like the high press and all that. That's, that's always been around. It's just never been called a high press, has it? It's been called close your man down. <laughs> Gagan <laughs> press. Like, yeah, it's, like, just, it's always been around. Please. I was interested. I was talking to Pep Linders and... Uh, Vic oh, oh, good effort. I was talking to Pep Linders and Victor Matos when I went into Liverpool. Yeah. We got to ask them questions and, and they showed us what they were doing. And, and their terminology for pressing is we just chase the ball. Like, as soon as we lose the ball, we chase it to get it back. Yeah. No high press, no gagging pressing. If we lost the fucking ball, let's chase this and get it back. It's our ball. Yeah. <laughs> and that was you on the playground. It's the same thing. It is, yeah. All these people, and especially the women, are coming in, putting these big things in there to make themselves sound like they fucking know more than the average bear instead of just calling it for what it is. Yeah. You need to get back to simple, common sense talking, not big, long words, jargon, to try and make yourself sound oh. like you're fucking really intelligent. 
This is getting open the game now. I'm really enjoying this. This is fucking end to end. This is a really good no. game now. That's it. Hold it. Wait. Let it go. That's it. He looks a bit shy of confidence, doesn't he? Like, you, you can usually tell when a player is shy of confidence. Oh. They take, like, a An little extra, extra step, yeah. a little yeah. extra touch. You know, where, where when oh, you're fucking confident, yeah. you fucking play stuff, no luck passes, and, you know... Yeah, you, you know, first you, time round the corners and that. Oh, what's going on with them? Uh, yeah, they've got, like, chocolate a little fizz. Yeah, we've got there, these chocolate orange on. things. Um, oh, yeah. We're eating munchies and chocolate orange, but they've got, like, an exploding candy in. Um... Yeah, a bit weird, yeah. No, they're nice, don't they? To be fair, I liked when Cadbury's done the marvellous bars with the popping candy and, and that. And the in. smarties and all yeah. sorts. Of, yeah, that was every day. Joe, question from the chat here from Harry Moll. I think it's Lee's little brother. I'm pretty sure that that's Harry Moll? Yeah, Go Lee's on. little brother. Who's the worst gaffer you've ever had? The <sighs> worst I've ever had? The worst. Uh, Mark Hughes. Oh, fucking hell. Mark Hughes was shite. Uh, <laughs> Warburton was up there for me. We, yeah. We, yeah. Black Rangers. We. we. Yeah. I didn't spend long enough with him, and he's not a bad man, but I just, he's so weak. Like, but based on time spent with him, I'd have to say Sparky. Yeah. I, 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 I carry a different the energy with it now because I've been a manager, but yeah, it's just weird, actually, when I think about it. And it wasn't just with me. It was, like, it was just a weird fella. Just really cold with everybody. But... No, not not a bad man, but it was just shite. Like what it. was Pardew like? What, what I like Pardew. Pardew. I thought Pardew was sound, honest to God. Pardew. I had a few ding-dongs with him. Like I, I famously, uh, when he first got the job, I was fuming they got rid of Chris Hewton. Yeah. Because Chris was a fucking good man. Paul Newcastle was, weren't he? Well, I actually didn't always see eye to eye with Chris. I had a load of ding-dongs with Chris. and But I respected him massively, and he, was, he, he had a strong opinion, and... He done a good job. He done a fucking great job, getting us back in the championship of, uh, from the champ to the prem first chance with the chaos going on around the club. Is and that she either going to take over or not? So the first time I get Pardew, I was fuming. Chris had gone because I, I fucking cared about people who I feel an injustice towards. If you deserve it, I've been there when I'm like, get him to fuck the manager. He's shite. Yeah. But Chris didn't deserve it, and then Pards come in from nowhere, left the field, and I had to go and knock and say, listen, knocked on his office door. I said, look, I don't fucking like you. <laughs> Everything I've heard about you, you know, what you get up to with fucking players, there was rumours about him with fucking yeah. players' wives and all that, allegedly, I don't want to go in there, mm -hmm. but there's a few rumours about him, you know, he's a bit chocolate, isn't he? Uh, like, that, so I didn't like him out the gate. Yeah. And then I just fronted him up first day, I went, look, the card's on the table with you here, I don't, I'm gutted, he's gone as the manager, I don't think he should have been sacked. I also fucking don't like you, from what I've heard, yeah. and this is the, these are the things I've heard about you. And he went to me, fair enough. He said, I've also heard this about you and levelled me. He said, I've fucking heard you X, Y and Z. And to be honest, I'm a bit... And after that, we shook hands. When I, we, we got our cards on the table. We never had an issue. Funny that, didn't it? And proper we got on. I, fucking, I went, yeah. you know what? And he was a proper fellow with it. And I, and I learnt loads. He was a good fucking manager. He's a good coach. What? Listen, he's a bit mad in terms of the dance he done and all that fucking <laughs> nonsense when he was fucking on the side. Jimmy Bullard, Just killed him himself with that dance in the cuff. And he fucking gave it that with the fucking Yeah, Jimmy Bullard called him chocolate, didn't he? He used to call him chocolate all the time. But, but he's not. He's, he's a good manager. He should be. He should be managing. He's a fucking good manager. Like I yeah. see Warnock getting all these jobs, and he's fucking ten times better than Warnock. Like ten times better yeah. than Neil Warnock. He's just quit at Aberdeen again, hasn't he? Yeah. What was that story of Warnock? Would you pick the team? Was it when he went? No, his wife pick, used to pick the team. Not fucking me. His wife used to get up and he'd pick the team on a Friday. So you do all your team shaking your prep, and he come in Saturday and go, "Sorry, Sharon's had a uh, dream last night that uh, Hyder scores the goal, so we're going to change the team." And Hyder's playing, <laughs> and Hyder didn't score the goal in the game. You're like, "Fucking hell!" But like, like, what? You changing the team because your wife's had a dream? Not even you. You haven't even had the dream yourself. She might have had that. She might have just backed Hyder first goal. Knows he takes pens. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, but like, it's a mad reason. That's why I'm like, "What's this fucking spaceman on about?" <laughs> and that's why he can't do it at Premier League level. Listen, he's a brilliant manager to get in your promoter. Or he was. He's shite now. He's gone now. He's, 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 you know, he's just the job and the Aberdeen job and the, you know, his yeah. last few jobs to test that right. He kept others field up and he, he gone in as a fire, fire fighter there and that might be his role. Yeah. But he'd never done it. He always got teams promoted to the Prem but couldn't, never kept the team in it and that's why. I had a conversation the other day about Chris Wilder and I, and I think he's running into the same problem. Like you can be a really good, but the Prem's just a different beast. The players yeah. you deal with are just fucking, they've just got a different energy. That's why I'd love to see a woman manager go in because I'm telling you, they'd soon fucking regret that decision because I'm telling you there'd be about 15 transfer requests going in because they just go I'm off yeah. because it's a fucking serious competition like and, and yeah, it, you don't want to be an experiment in the Premier League do you? you can't be doing that you can go and do it League 2 or something and I'd put a woman and try and see how we get on but for a woman to jump in the Prem first <laughs> out the traps it'll be just nuts I could see someone managing because you go well, right, with the skill set to manage people 
it's slightly different from the skill set to play or under or commentate on it or and provide expert analysis. Like you, I could see if. So, oh, oh, I want to finish. Oh. I told you on the goals. We're in on the goals. That's a fucking great finish, you know. I think Nick Pope saves this though. Yeah. That's a, that's a difference. That's why I fancied the goals because these aren't fair choice keepers. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, Pope's a good cat. Again, it's, it's this Dan Byrne side. I do, and, and I know he's been brilliant for Newcastle, Dan Byrne. It's been a fucking great signer, but I just think long term, I'm like, what's happened to the boy you paid 30 million for from Chelsea, the left back? He's still there, isn't he? Paul. Oh. But, but like, sure. Paul. Oh. Yeah, but, but I'm saying, like, why why is Dan still the, the left back? All right, he's a centre half, the way they play, but if Paul's they. In. Like, that's, that's Dan a, Byrne's man again. I know it, yeah, it is. But it's a great though, finish, though. Cole Palmer, England squad. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, I think so. It's a good pass from Enzo, under five million well spent. That little there. strike <laughs> reverse under the defender's legs is so like effective, isn't it? Do you think, yeah, because you, you think Pope stops that. Pope saves that. Pope saves that. I'm telling you, Nick Pope gets that. Watch where his hand is. The Bradford. So he's better than Pickford, you reckon, Pope? I I think as a goalkeeper, kicking wise and shot back yeah. wise, mm. Nick Pope's a well better shot stopper than Pickford. Like okay. fucking well, uh, well better coming for crosses. Well he's got better from an aerial. <laughs> like makes more saves, so he's a better keeper. But, Pickford kicks it better. He, he passes oh, he it out. He, he starts attacking. No, he does start attacks with what his kicking. I watched him the other week. I can't remember he played Pickford and, and six, seven times he kicked it out. Oh no! He, he, but he shell. He shell. You don't realise how far how far Jordan Pickford kicks it. Like he he, yeah. he, he starts attacks for Everton. Again, yeah. oh. Oh, oh, he's got it. He's put him in. Sad. I should have tackled him outside the box. He's got a square there. He should have tackled him outside the box. Oh wow! <sighs> should have squared. Dan Byrne, what a yeah. signing! What Just, a player! <laughs> That's what you need, big Dan, left back. Um, Should have squared that to Palmer though. I thought he'd missed goal. the chance. He was like a like a fucking sea lion there, weren't he? Fucking running it. with the ball on his head, Sterling. <laughs> Sterling not wanting to pass it because Palmer will get in England. Over it. Him, no, I don't think Sterling gets in England off full stop. No, I think that's I mean, it. It's, it's, a bit, yeah. it's a bit like the Rashford one in, in Look, the derby, isn't no. it? Uh, Just pass it. Even uh, there still. Do you know what? <laughs> He's never, he's never been that's a that type of player though, as he's Sterling. As for all his attributes and the pace and the power, finesse and finishing, you don't fancy, and him, you don't fancy him. Technically, yeah. he's, he's, always, he's got an awkward finishing style, hasn't he? He's got like an awkward kick. You know what I mean? He's missed a good few sitters when he was at City. Oh, if he could kick again. the ball, if he could kick the ball cleanly, yeah, like, like, he'd, he'd, the he'd, he'd have another hundred goals. Yeah, yeah. and it's, he'd have another hundred goals. He's had a great career and it's unbelievable career. Pep done the thing with him though, where he basically just got him running into positions where he couldn't fucking miss yeah. really. That yeah. Pack, like, within yeah, the yeah, yards and, and, and made it simple for him. I mean, it, you know, yeah. he's unlucky there. Where could he go there? Chop it back. Yeah, I think it. you'd have to give the lads two la two men on the line, the keeper. Like, I had, it, to, had to chop that back as the cat went for the uh, went for the cup of tea. I know, but also it, like I'm not you, in that position. It's gonna score there if you get it, if that could go in between any of their legs. Like you've got to take that shot there. It, it, that's game over if he gets that. Yeah, it is. I don't think you know, we're half an hour left. Um, they come yeah. back from that. Two two, man, uh, two twos on top, on it. top of the champ. Desmond two two. I've top of the champ. I've looked the champ this weekend. Yeah, Leicester. Yeah, we've just there. had a question from the champs. Who's your three? Who you picking to go up? Leicester's arse have gone, haven't he? What are the two points now? Leeds two points. I still think they'll do it. Leicester leads. Ipswich. Ipswich. Ipswich, yeah. Yeah. Bold. I think I think Southampton. Well, that's it's only two. I two think he's far to the bit Southampton. I think he's only one three and plus playoff. Yeah. So I'm going to go Leicester, Leicester Leeds and Southampton, and I think I think Leeds win it. I think Ipswich. Do you think Leeds win it? Yeah. Yeah, I think Leeds win it. I think yeah, I think Leicester will come back. I mean, pick back up. Yeah, I, 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 I can't see them two not getting a job done, and then it's just the. F I, 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 I would like Ipswich because I think they're, you know, they're a good side, and I've obviously yeah. coached against them in the last couple of years, and so you've seen the team progress. And I think Kieran McKenna's done a fucking great job; he's a good manager, um, ball, another up and coming manager. How long do you reckon? Oh, that's a foul. Yeah, yeah. say that. How long do you reckon he'll be at? He's linked. He's linked. Well, he, he, then he cut his teeth in there. At United, yeah, he was, yeah, he yeah. was on the staff at United yeah, with yeah. Uh, before what was his name? Was it Mourinho? Was it? No, it was a uh, after uh, Ralph Ragnick. Ragnick, fucking mm. hell, I forgot he was in there. That fucking band party popped up in there, didn't he? Yeah. Ralph Ragnick, um, you see what Rooney but he's said been, about he's been in United's academy for years, hasn't he? And like obviously, Rooney uh, said about he was talking on um, that footy show. Can't hear you, it's been to Mike. What do you mean you can't hear me? <laughs> well, you the lads won't hear you on the podcast. They can hear me, I'm right away. There. What's that? They can hear me, can they? Yeah. Go on then. Speaking into his cock. Rooney then. said, um, was it Van Gaal was the best manager he had? Yeah. Tactically, yeah, he said Van Gaal was like. But he said he was just like a nuffy. Yeah, she's nuts. But that's. You, Van Gaal, if you look at his CVs, outrageous. 
Oh yeah. And, yeah. And, like, so I mean, you did you, what, did, what did he say about them in, in, in the in the in dinner time? He couldn't leave. He couldn't until leave he, until Van until Van had finished his dinner. He'd finished the <laughs> and he used to have a three course meal. Every, yeah, every, every day. Every so day. we had to go in to said to Van Arsie, it's amazing. We we'll had to get a bit pissed off here. Yeah. Like, we're all gonna sit there. So you get your three course meal. You give us a little bit of leeway. <laughs> like, did did okay, yeah. Many, yeah. Yeah, give them. Yeah. yeah. It's a big Dutch thing, that though. That's, that comes out of that Dutch um, Ajax kind of Ajax school yeah, in terms of they believe in all eating at the same time. And so you always get coaches who come in who have just like a quirk, like something quirky that they're into. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's what they said about. I think never heard Neville speak about it about the England squad when we had the gold generation. They used to have the United click the first and then get off, and then like your Liverpool lads are come in. After them, just to leave, so they weren't together, and I think it was a uh, fucking team then, are they? That's what, that's what this, I, that's I think what all of them were on the telly now, pontificating, oh, and they go, wow, the golden generation, I'm going, because clearly you were all a fucking bunch of lads who fucking never knitted together and got on, and if you want to win a major tournament, you've got to put your club rivalries aside and your ego aside I to think... come together as one, and I don't think we ever did. No, we never, and I think you'd that... always had Beckham trying to fucking maximise his visibility, and then you'd had all the egos underneath that competing for fucking then second you've got place. The media. Then media, the media, media weren't great. Then the pets they fired and making mistakes and all. You know, th there was a few factors, but one of them being mainly that the fucking lads never got it together. Because, you, as you say, you had these fucking Man City, uh, sorry, Man United, Man United. Uh, Liverpool, Liverpool clicks and or the Arsenal, the Chelsea, Chelsea clicks. clicks or whatever it was. And that's come at the cost of knitting a team, an England team together that can, you know, get get over the line. In, yeah. in, in, in the, and as you see, in the big games, it's the fucking small margins that decide... You know the, the the outcome of you know major tournaments, and if you've got any from bubbling away, like the wag thing was fucking embarrassing. All the wag fucking attention and Cheryl Cole and fucking posh Spice and fucking the Colleen. I'm like fuck off. Was ass fucking focus on the team. He's had a stinker tonight, Dan Burn. Yeah, yeah. Is that why they're going on Southgate? They think he's smoked his uh, his his England chances. I don't I don't think England. No. I don't think he's. No chance. You got Chilwell, you got Shaw. I don't think he's in the centre half conversation. That was a funny one when Neville said he tried to tap up Stephen Gerrard to come to United. It's just like, uh, uh, you've got more chance of plant and piss. <laughs> but again, that's know, the whole Stevie problem with that England thing. Don't forget them, Man United Chelsea boys. I, I, I think they prioritise United over England. Not not all of them, but there was definitely times where Scholes Fergie did. would pull them out of a squad or yeah. you go, and you'd like now, I think Scholes was. Just a moody cunt anyway, so I don't think Fergie would have either just gone, I'm not, I'm not playing in that game. Yeah. I think he's that type of fella. I don't think that Fergie might have gone, you know, yeah. do you really want to play in that? And he's like, no. Nah. With the others, they, you know, they did turn up and, and put the hours in, in terms of, you know, yeah. Gary Neville's and Beckham, I think, were great servants for England, but again. But they're just, it's mad how players are tapping players up in England and all yeah, goes on. Yeah, that's a mad thing, but it, obviously that goes on everywhere. It goes on everywhere. Yeah. Remember when we were at, was it under 21s when you played? When Doc Waller came over the table? Liverpool, that was yeah. a mad one. Yeah, but again, that, it happens. Like, that's that's Just thing. tapping up, like, every, everywhere in England international games. Just like, go, people go to games, people go to nightclubs, it, like, it happens everywhere. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like anything. It's, you know, you've got to have a good relationship with your players to go, they're going to get, if they're good, people trying to fucking woo them. Yeah, you know, it's but you've got to have a, enough about yet to to make them go. Yeah, listen, thanks. It's nice when someone. It's like being in a, a marriage, isn't it? A relationship. You get some you know, your toes. People are gonna like you know, and you've got to go. Look, I'm committed to this. Yeah. This is what this is where I'm at. Hell. This is where I'm committed to. Listen, fucking hell, it, it it is what it is. Yeah. And I think in terms of footy, players tend not to stay at a club now long if they don't want to be there. Like Anthony Gordon or Everton, or like he's as soon as he decides he's away. They fucking find a way of getting out if the good players. Cole Palmer at City. Cole Palmer at City. What's this? Uh, what's this? Jason Tindall all about? Like every time the camera's on, Eddie Howe, he's just in his ear like that, isn't he? Like, I don't know. He's a fucking. Shadow. I don't know him, but he seems a right. Would that be your head out, though? If you're a manager, if you're a manager, I think it's part like of constantly... their thing, isn't it? I think I think it's part of their double act. Like there's not many others who do that, but no. he has been. He's always there. Yeah, he's always on the on the sideline, like... Just in his ear. To be fair to him, I think he's made... He's fucking having a laugh with it, isn't he? Because he, he keeps posting photos and all that. Like, everyone's obviously on him heavy for it. <laughs> and he's fucking having a laugh with it. And he's clearly in Jürgen Klopp's head. Because Klopp... I had to go over it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it's a tactic, I think. Why like, happened there It's just another tactic, Klopp. I think. To con like, you don't realise all the games that go on within the game about controlling the fourth official or who fucking speaks to him or if he says something, who's going to say... Like, and it's all designed like it is on the pitch to fucking get the fourth official on side or, or to fucking get 
Klopp reacting so that he's not focused on the team and the subs, and that's an edge for them. Because the Premier League came out and said only the managers can be in the box, didn't he? And Klopp went, yeah, that's a good rule, but it doesn't apply to Jason Tim, the load, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so again, he's, he's already in the red. You know yeah. He's already in the red. Oh, my God. He's yeah, yeah, then he's winded. Yeah. Yeah, big Danny's up early there. That's half a chance, that. Yeah, I think he just big... rides on the back. Is it Jackson? Who's got him? Who's got him? Two up early. Oh, no, the big... What's his name? To get his body, Who's got him? Body underneath. Dezazi. Dezazi. Yeah, that wasn't a, a Harry Kane back into one. That was just an accident, that one. Just lands a bit funny. Yeah, they win. Yeah, he's, he's a big lump in the ground. Yeah, he's a big lump in the ground. He's a big hole in the ground. Look at him. So, yeah, it's it's one of those where... Like, like if if you're damn being there... Like, it's half a chance. Like, it's a big chance. It's, 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 on big, your head. it's half a yeah, chance. It's a good chance. It's it's a, it's a decent ball into a decent area. You've got free at the Zazi, and then obviously you've, you've got a full headed contact on it. Yeah. Yeah, it oh, is yeah. Elliot. So, this is. Yeah, this is. This will work nicely. Kraut, yeah. So, Kraut Kraut for someone just like Kraut, is it? Best, best Kraut. player you've managed, Joe. Is he up there, Elliot? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. gives, 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 gives you three. Um, three best players you've managed. It doesn't have to be in order. Yeah, it, 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 this is not ranking them in terms of he's the best player. It's like, obviously, the lads have seen develop the game to become really, really good and take stuff on, and then they're still rising. But I'll have to say... Quanta. <laughs> no, obviously, Jarrell's easy to talk about because he's, he's meteoric rise slipper, but I, I wouldn't have put him in there. I'd have put Harry Suter in. Harry Suter was superb for us at... Um, Fleetwood. Fleetwood and then obviously got a move to Leicester after yeah. doing well at Stoke and played in the World Cup for Australia against Argentina Elliot for me was is probably the best I've had in terms of he, he just fucking never had a bad game he just caught fire got a bit of confidence and just rode it and hasn't looked back since until you know got a bit of a setback um, and then the other one for me would I'd say Wes Burns I picked Wes up and he was a striker who'd lost his way a little bit of Fleetwood and then he's gone we, we turned him into a wing back and a full back and then he's gone on to do fantastic for Ipswich and, you know, flying in Ipswich side and playing every week. And I think should should get a call off of Wales relatively yeah. soon. Um, but Wes, we worked every single day on the training ground with Wes. To def- he didn't have certain things in his game. And Clint and Steve Ayer and myself and Mangy, Barry Nick, worked on him every single day on his extras. And then he, he just seen him grasp it. He started getting the, the improvements in his game. His crossing become a little bit more predictable because he was always quick started to add these little bits that he needed to go up the chain and then obviously goes to Ipswich, gets a move there and to be fair to the kid, he hasn't looked back. Yeah. No, that's sometimes players did. I don't think they just... They well, that just need an opportunity. It depends, it Liverpool it not, not, a bad, yesterday. not a bad three there then, so you've got one Yeah, I could have named Louis one, Coyle in there. There's a few lads I could have named in there who were doing well in the there, One playing in the Premier League and two of them on the cusp of playing in the Premier League next year. Yeah, and Hull are going well. Louis Coyle's captain of Hull. He, he was another real real good. We, we inherited him on loan. He was from Leeds, and we ended up converting him to a permanent sign and then sold him to Hull for a few yeah. quid. And just had a... He, he just won't let you down, and he's gone on. Hull's his own town club, so he said, look, yeah. I don't want to go, but this is like my team. Yeah. And he's gone there, not only done well and played in the champ, the arm, but man. become the captain, and he's, 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 you know, Tommy Coyle, they're a big Hull family, and, and he's become Hull's captain. Tommy yeah. used to wear the Hull kit when he fought Derry Matthews, and, you yeah. know... Mm. Um, Luke Campbell and all that and Coyley's another one who I could see him going on again he could he could if Hull keep doing as well as they're doing they're the dark horses I think Hull to get in yeah doing a good job yeah done a great job Liam Rosini yeah. well he was Rooney's man weren't he from Derby yeah. everyone said hopefully Wayne comes on and tells us something else but everyone said he's young fucking everything and Wayne just kind of was Wayne yeah and that's a Gerard one isn't it that Mick Beale done everything and Stephen was just kind of Stephen he's had a bit of a weird Time yeah, because late, he, maybe he's not a manager, maybe he's a coach. Like maybe Steve McLaren kind of like was kind of always labelled that. Like some mm. people are better coaches than they are managers. Well, Pep Linders went over to Heronveen, wasn't it, and got fucked off there and come back to Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? It's a tough gig, lads. I'm telling you, being a manager is a completely fucking different gig to being the first mm. team coach or assistant manager or scout. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. a completely different entity. That's why you have to take your hat off to obviously Roy Hodgson's, but obviously Pep and Klopp as well, because they fucking keep you know, they draw, it's the end of the world and they have to deal with the world's media. I actually think it's hard to be Liverpool manager, Klopp, than his City manager because of the media s- scrutiny around Liverpool compared Can't to City. Be. I think you're right, I think Liverpool's and United's managers are the two hardest jobs in there. Yeah. Uh, them, them two would, you, them. would you go back in as a number two somewhere, Joe? Do you know what? I, I think it'd be, it's an easier job for me to do that. Like I, I, I used to hate dealing with the press, like because you have to fucking, you know. Be, so, I say, though, yellow, yeah. 
I don't need them on that. Is that his first foul? Yeah, I think so. So I don't need them on that because I've got three, haven't I? I did. He's not going to get it. He's not going to get another one. What do you mean? He'll be, he, he could foul. be another foul. No, I think he's he'll... had a good game, Livermento. Yeah. Yeah, he's. He, he was. Uh, like, he's mad this, he's he's mad this right? I, I kind of think he's the fucking ready replacement for Kyle Walker in the England side. Because he fucking moves like Kyle. He's a fucking racehorse, yeah. T.O. Livermento. I remember watching him for Chelsea under 18s against Man United under 18s, and you'd have, I, I just, you just see them straight away. I'm like, who the fuck's right? We'll have yeah. him. It's like, you know, the, the, the race, the superstar race or you can spot, like, <laughs> you could just see the way he moved. And then, to be fair to him, he's had a bit of a problem. He had a bad injury, didn't he, at Southampton? He was flying and then got a really bad knee injury. You know, I, I think it, he's got that kind of gait, that doing? Kyle Walker type fucking raw athleticism. Yeah, engine in the Don't forget how raw Kyle Walker was when he mm. first came out of Sheffield United and went to Spurs, Spurs and all that. Yeah, he got fucked like up Kyle Spurs because he was become a hell of a player now. He, he wasn't, he didn't have the best time to Spurs, did well, he? Yeah, he was probably raw. at his peak, any now. He's, he's, raw. Raw. he's getting better, he's getting quicker. Oh, no, I was fucking he getting got, quicker. So I say those had two fouls. Two, so I need one more. Get a little and you need it. And a Bruno card. Bruno, all right, he's got time. You guys are getting easier. Um, the Bruno card and Ma Murphy assist or score. Yeah, there we go. Great ball. Oh, oh. A cast now. He's on the corners, and he gives us a chance. Yeah, um, what are we talking about there? Number two. Number, number two. Number oh, two. yeah, like, so, uh, like, I, I, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against it. I, I, I kind of want to go back in if I did that and work with kind of the, the, the top end boys rather than your kind of League Ones, League Twos, but in a couple of in a couple of years nah in a couple he's got won't he any um in a couple of years I, I don't know I, I think about it but I'm, I'm actually quite happy doing this like I'm actually not overly stressed about being out of coaching at the minute because I've, I've literally gone from playing for, for a long period of my life to managing straight away and I've had five and a bit years there and it's a fucking intense job especially at league one league two level mm. when you're living away from home so yeah. I just want to be back home see my kids grow up I'll start this we've obviously started this little journey into the podcasting world and hopefully that keeps growing and then in a couple of years I'll see where I am. You know, but I'm in no rush of you know, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. forty one. I'm I'm not like You're a baby. Like, yeah. like I've had I've got real good experience as a coach, you know, in terms of running my own environment at Fleetwood and Bristol Rovers and obviously I've got me, me playing career to, to to use as a reference point as well. What about playing? Playing. Do you know what I I, I, I might, I'm gonna oh, I thought I was gonna give a pen. Down, yeah. uh, playing I've Come been down. asked to play in the vets, which is once every three weeks, which I might do with with which a few vet? lads Who over forties. <laughs> uh a couple of my mates are, are in a team, they're like, Do you fancy playing? It's once every three weeks. I was trying to go there, Josh, and see if he fancies it. So I'm give him I've got someone to pass to then. As a ringer? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, well yeah, once he turns once him. he comes of age. Speaking of ringers, um, I've had the first uh, look alike shout. Go on. Oh. For the man in the hat. Man in the hat, who have they gone for? <laughs> Tushel. Go on. Thomas, Thomas Tuchel, Tuchel. Oh, yeah, 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 like yeah, 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 I like it. It's not a bad one. I mean, he's got, he's got a solid hairline in Tuchel. <laughs> Tuchel's got, got coast, coastal erosion on the front yeah, of his... Yeah, Tuchel's front full of back of the bottom right front. <laughs> <laughs> he's can't stop the tide coming in there. <laughs> CT. Um, Good ball. Oh. Chance. Tagging. Oh, I should have passed oh, it. Oh, I should have passed it, yeah. On his right peg. Got to hit that. Oh, he was swinging it and hoped that. So he's, he looks like he's gone to a back three. Has he gone to a back three? No, no. Livermento to left, no, no, left no. back. Yeah, he's going to left back. Kraft is to right back. The, right, 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 right. And he's oh, oh yeah. chance, gotta be. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I thought, I thought he missed it then. He needed that, Mudrich. Yeah. That's a great yeah. finish. He needed that. Barbie. He needed that. In terms of he's he's had a um, tough start to life in. Going to see Bruno in, in, in the card now. Yeah. Bruno lashing out a bit. Hopefully. In terms of what, what do we need? We need an assist for um, Saicedo Farrell. Saicedo Farrell and Bruno Card for your bet. Bruno Card. Mine's dead because. Uh, um, oh no, Card. Have I, I, I got three on. two? What? So yeah, someone said three two. I have three two. two. I said three two. My bet's now a two two. Three two Chelsea. You said three two Chelsea, yeah. Three two Chelsea, yeah. I'm up and smoke. We knew it was going to be a goals on this tonight, like but it wasn't. I like the I, I, just on the keepers. That's why I just thought you know both keepers aren't knocked in. Both teams are going to go for it. He done well. I thought he missed the gym. Yeah, I thought he missed. I tell you what, Jackson Can does well here. Stop it, you know. Jackson does well. Oh, he just passes it. No, yeah. Jackson does well just to just not like it rush it and try and put it in. Just, just allow the lads to come with him. He, I mean Gallagher to get the assist, but it's great feet. Oh, he half gives him a chance, you know. Mm. I'm telling you, he half gives him a chance to, to clear oh, that. Oh, 
Oh, my two legs are shy there, aren't Shy, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Calf just can't sort his feet out. No, and then I trained. I had a game. I had a, train, a couple of training sessions a couple of weeks ago with the, the lads from Prescott Cables, um, and they were saying, "Would you, would you play?" I'm like, "I don't think my body's up to it. Like, not yeah. not not like competitive football against young lads." Um, but because I'm doing this half marathon, marathon, I'll, I thought I'll, I'll do a bit of training, see where I am. And I actually went out the game with them and done the training, and I really enjoyed it. Just like. Just easy. being a player again. But it was non competitive. It's not easy, not when you're fucking 41 and you're trying to get yourself. Um, I think it, you're. Chase you, a load of 22, 23 big, year olds. You'd be a big target, wouldn't you, when you go in them? No, but the, as I say, the, there's no tackling down there now. The game of football, the tackling's gone. Like, you know what I mean? So the only thing is, like, and I can tackle, so it's no problem for me. Like, you don't have to run fast to be able to tackle properly. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, don't forget, I'm fucking 10 yards ahead of them in my head, you know, in terms of what I see. It's like, when, when I train with them, the, the 22-year-old kids, it was like being a matador with the bull. Just like, come here, come here, come here, see you later. <laughs> Which is what I used to do to championship players anyway, so don't forget, never mind, these non-league players. Um, no matter what age you am, it's playing centre mid, I can still control the flow of the game. Listen, kind of get box to box and kind of fuck. <laughs> no, but I'm sitting over 90 minutes. It's like that. Have you seen when if they do them England ex ex pro ex and oh, the touch that is. That first touch. And that, and the, it, what's the name Paul Mason plays for England? Harry Redknapp's yeah. team. He's the women's team. See, when they play the women's team. Yeah, and he battered them. Yeah. But I mean, even against Paul Mason, still looks head and shoulders. But, he looks but again, because the lads, when you play that level, you still see yeah. what you see. You just can't do what you used to be able to do. Yeah. But you can still do more than the average person. You yeah. just can't. Like I always think players who are fast, who go like so like a Raheem Sterling loses, or a Kyle a Walker went like they always go straight you, you, it's tougher yeah. but someone I never had any pace to fucking begin with so for me I haven't, I've just got a bit slower but I wasn't that quick anyway so mine was always where to be what position to take up where the danger's going to be you know the famous Wayne Gretzky quote of why are you so good they said to him and he said because when everyone's skating to where the puck is I was always skating to where the puck was going to be once I heard that, it changed the way I thought about the game. I was like, all right. Most people run to where they think the danger... you got to know where the danger's going to be and be there before they get there. And they're like, where the fuck's this come from? And you learn that as you get older. You learn what position to take up. Then once you go into coaching, I learn a completely different way of seeing the game as a coach. So when I go back and play now, I'm an even better mind on the pitch. I'm not, the, I'm not a better physical specimen who can cover the ground and cause you the problem, but my mind is even sharper yeah, than what, you mean. what it was. My body just isn't anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to see how sharp I can get your it. Your mind's probably better than peak Joey Barton well, 23, listen, 24. You, I can still fucking play in the WSL and be the best player <laughs> in, in the game tomorrow. We've seen it, Joe, right. seen Barton, come on. Jo no, I can't now. Keir on. Starmer's come out and he said they're not oh, having it. Not they're not like they're so fuck, that's... Oh. That, that could, I could have been the fucking real deal there. I could have been, <laughs> could have been the best woman playing the world. The real world. deal. Like the, yeah. And they wouldn't have been able to say Who was that woman? What was her name? Mateta? Brazilian woman. The best, the best yeah, woman. Maya Harm. Uh, no, her name's uh, Marta. 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 Yeah. yeah. Jo Josephine Marta. But I was saying, like, the best woman player. Ah, the, oh God. Doesn't want him getting injured, does he? Ah. He's done well, this kid, young yeah, Lewis Miley. Yeah, young kid. Yeah, he's okay, about six. He, he looks a real prospect, by does, the way. Yeah, he's coming. Didn't he? He's 16, is he? No, I think he's older than This that. is another young kid, isn't it? White. Joe White. I had a look at taking him to Bristol Rovers as well. Position? Like looks a bit twitchy. I think he's a midfielder, you know. Got the mullet. No weird age. Um, they like him a lot. But but again, I think Eddie's gone. Probably not going to win this. Yeah. A few young kids going on the pitch takes a steam yeah. out of it because people go, oh, we haven't had everyone fit. You know, you obviously can't risk getting Goomeresh and a few others injured. So, That's game management in it now at all. It's just it is, but what he's got to be careful of, the Saudis won't have this, I'm telling you. Like, the Saudis don't give a fuck about a nice guy, Eddie. Mm. Literally, he will get his head chopped off. Like, literally. <laughs> he will, he, he, no, that's he's fact. What's happened. Have you still had any uh, cups, Newcastle? No. No. Hell, how, how's he still there? How, how's Eddie House still there? Because he'd done an incredible good. job last, last year. Season, yeah. And he'd done an incredible yeah. job keeping him up. He's got loads of the that. tank left. Right, right, though, it's, 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 absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. I'm yeah. saying... He should keep his job. Like, they'll, they'll be thinking, we could possibly get like a Roberto Mancini or I don't know, because that they'll want, as you know, with, with, them, with them Arabs, right? Marino. Look at the horse racing world with the Arabs, right? It's a fucking massive ego contest. They will not want Abu Dhabi. And Qatar yeah. and all these nations, they feel are massively inferior in terms of the GDP and the yeah. oil production to fucking usurp them and be more successful than them in professional football. 
So they'll eventually turn Newcastle into a juggernaut. The problem you've got is the FFP scrapping against it. Now, Newcastle have just realised, doesn't matter how much money you've got, Dan Ashworth will get taxed off you. Man United and Liverpool will tax them off you. But yeah. the problem you've got is, the Saudis, I don't believe, will want to fucking finish 10th and 8th. No, well, he's, now, he, he, he's got credit in the bankhead with Amanda yeah. Staveley and my head yeah. and, and obviously the PIF sitting behind that. But that won't fucking last forever. Mm. Like that, that sentiment won't last forever. Like if Newcastle don't pick up and Mourinho's on the table or Mancini, because they'll all, don't forget all these top managers be going, I want that fucking Newcastle gig because that is going to be unlimited funds to compete with less pressure. It's Man City before they get to Pep. So one yeah. of them top managers are going to go, if I fucking get in that hot seat, I'm going to be able to spend. Yeah. I can fucking do what, I can, I can do Just, what everybody's, um, dreamt about in Newcastle like no disrespect to Eddie but is he going to be the manager who turns them into a title yeah, he, winning team he's a fucking wet wipe isn't he well he's I, I, I like him I actually think he plays a role in the Tindall so I, I don't I, I like him and oh. as I say he's done phenomenal for me in terms of giving me no, but Elliot Anderson he, on he, loan if you're a Man United a Liverpool or Man City you're not going to go after Eddie out because he's just not got that you need, a, you need something different what Pep's got what Klopp's got to be a little bit... But, but say, say Eddie Howe got... He is new, nice guy, say, Eddie. Say Eddie Howe got nice Newcastle Eddie. to win a league. Oh, he's not going to do, is he? Well, no. the fucking hell, he got him to the fourth year, day. No. Well, he's, as you said, he's, he's, nice, last year. he's nice guy, Eddie, for me. And he's just not got that mean streak. What some... <gasps> the fuck are you doing? What? I think you need like a little bit of a naughty streak to be like a top, top. A top... Oh... It's fucking everywhere. What's going on? Newcastle have just put the put a load of changes on. It's disjointed them a little bit. Um, sometimes your subs can fucking kill you. Cause your sparks. He's just chanting his arm free one down. It's like got nothing to lose. You're gonna lose the game anyway. Let's see what he can do. Keeps the steam out your. It keeps the noise out your ears. The keeps the steam room. out out your lads in, in yeah. terms of you. Gumares is not going to get injured. Who's going to be a big player in, in the getting, next few weeks with them and the kids are getting more experience kids, yeah. and fitness. Um, what were we talking about there? Sorry, before we went off a on that. Nice guy, Eddie. Nice guy, Eddie. Like, like I could see, I could see Man United. I'm not joking here. I could see Man United the point in Graham Potter. I could see Man United the point in Eddie out. I could. No, I could. Dan Ashworth's just got a fantastic working relationship with him. Newcastle get rid of him because a new sporting director comes in to replace Ashworth, who's a foreigner, who goes right. I've got a relationship with fucking ex coach, so he bunts his own men in. He gets squoze out, Eddie Howe, and then Eddie Howe, because the job he's done, I think he'll get yeah. another good job. And you could easily see Man United, because they're, they're in a fucking, they're in a, a tailspin, Man U. Yeah. They are, yeah. And, and they might just go, fuck it. He'll get a soft four. Yeah. yeah. I can see it. They might do, and it just, oh, they might he's use him his... as a, like a, like, like I, could see, I couldn't see him managing Liverpool or Man City. Yeah. Right, at this moment. But I could see him managing Man United, especially with Ashworth going there, and they've mm. had a phenomenal working relationship. I know what you mean by that. And I could that. see Eddie Howe managing England. I think I'm he's. Gonna, just... I'm just going to say to yeah. you, I think Eddie Howe's the next England manager for me. I think that's where he's sort of a, a yes man to be put in that England role. I think that's what his next job is. I, me personally. I'm saying you have to look at the young managers, and you have to say, listen, Eddie's Did job. You give it to Palmer? Took... No, there's not. Well, haven't they? That's a mistake. That. Um, oh. Y y y you have to look at the job Eddie Fancy does. Turn and Bournemouth round. Great job, right, yeah. No, but I think, but I think that's football. leading well, Bournemouth from the bottom to the top and keeping them there. And then obviously it went a little bit of Ray at the end, but also he's then gone to Newcastle when Unai Emery is turning the job down. Because yeah. he only got it because Unai Emery. He's only got it because other people turned it down. Oh, he did, yeah. And not, he kept them up, bought wisely, and then fucking made them finish fourth and excite the fan base again like nothing's ever seen. Champions League this year. Yeah. Listen, they've had a shit year this year, but I think it's been injury affected and obviously... The Champions League's a big change for them. And also Tenali getting fucking a suspension that they won't have seen coming. The director of football getting robbed off them. FFP squeezing them. And I think next year, if they have another season, I think he could... Neck could be on the board early in the season if they mm. get off to a shit start because the Saudis will want to win and they will be fucking ruthless in, in pursuit of that. Yeah, I know what you mean, but the Saudi, you want to win, just don't... Well, in the, in the horse racing world, they just, they, like, they just won't let... They don't like people buying... Like, it's just mad. Could you see Mourinho at Newcastle? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I could. Absolutely. The problem is, you go, Mourinho has been chased out of Roma there, and Roman have got better under De Rossi. Mourinho has been chased out of Man United, you know what I mean? Like he, they haven't got better. Mar Mourinho, I'm not saying they have, oh. but I'm saying Mourinho's kind of coming in off the back oh. of... 
Me, me. I know they won the Europa League at Roma, but yeah. like, yeah, he he's won another trophy. He's a serial winner, but he, he hasn't got them in. He never got them into the race for the title. Or I think know. he uh, potentially. I think he can win a trophy at Newcastle, whether it be the League Cup or something. How long has it been? Newcastle seventy? Was it seventy years or something? Yeah, it's like, it's like nineteen. It's like the first cup in nineteen fifty-eight or something like that. Sixty-eight or something. Uh -huh. Another shout for Newcastle here in the chat. Tuchel could see that. Bayern. He's gonna leave Bayern at the end of the season. Yeah. He done well in the Premier League, no matter what you think. With Chelsea, well, if he won European Cup for Chelsea, so I could see that. Could see Thomas Tuchel. What Tuchel do you make of Tuchel's job? Could see Tuchel at United. Tuchel's one that's got that anger streak in him. I can see he's a top job man. He's a. He's well, but again, he's he's gonna come on the board, isn't he? And you got mm. Hansi Flick still out of a job. who was linked with a load of big jobs. Not mm. not gone in. Obviously, Nagelsmann's Nagelsman, in the. Uh, is Nagelsmann going to Newcastle? He's he's won a cup. Nagelsmann took so the Germany job. Yeah, but the I mean, he's, I think if Klopp comes about, I think that's his job. Uh, whether... Telling you, Hansi Flick is a fucking no one. No one spoke about him. I'm like he. Bear in mind when Germany well, were going well. No, I'm just saying he's a he's a top manager. Zidane's another one. It's like. One of the European who are out of work and and like they will want to come to Premier League because this is where the this is where the top level football is. Yeah. So, you know, you, you're not just competing against other Englishmen. If you you know you're competing against the whole world. Didn't if Zidane take a mad role in like the F1 or something? Someone told me the Saudis were trying to buy Marseille and Zizou was going in because he's from Marseille. from Marseille. He was going in as the, and and I went and I can see what's happening with Marseille. Obviously, just removed Gattuso and they've picked back up a little bit. But like that's a serious. That's that. I think that's something that's doing the rounds there, and obviously Qatar and Saudi then are competing directly mm -hmm. in, in France. In France yeah. And Marseille, the biggest club in France, I know PSG got the, the noses Mar in front Marseille. in terms of the, yeah. the spend at the minute, but Marseille historically the yeah. biggest club. Marseille, PSG is Liverpool, Man United, you know Lyon, a few other teams will say that Arsenal or the Chelsea, yeah. but they're the two big powerhouses. Um, and then you go, okay, he could do a job, like. Zidane. like Saudis are going to make Newcastle a force. Like they've they've invested, I think, very smartly, very strategically, and that makes me think these are going to fucking these are going to make Newcastle a powerhouse in world football. Did and a powerhouse in world football, I think, you need a powerhouse manager. Look at City. You know they messed it around with Mancini, who won them a league. Um, Pellegrini. Pellegrini. Uh, Mark Hughes had to go in there. You know they had a, a before they got to Pep. Yeah. And then since they've got to Pep, they've just gone into fucking overdrive. Because to be a serial winning team, you need a manager who's at the fucking top of the tree. Well, you can you can see that. I mean, I, I know everyone goes on City have sp spent all this money and they spent more than everyone, but they also got Pep. Uh, Pep's that different to me. I mean, Chelsea spent all this money. Everton spent a few quid to try and, to try and climb the table. But oh, and Jacob. Oh! oh! <laughs> Little grasses in the chat need to stop doing spoilers Please or you're getting banned. Great goal, he's gave it two days. Is that fans. us? Are we in business here? We got the 3 2. Have you got it on now? We never got the yellow card, well. did we? Never with Bruno yellow card. Oh, Bruno yellow card. Yeah, he subbed off. I needed him on there. And Bruno? Yeah, Bruno got subbed off. That's some strike, that to be fair to Murphy. Fuck me, that's a hell of a hit, that. Michael Taylor, you are the grass. dives in, does he need to do it? Sells his wicket, but Great I mean, he's like. Grasses get shamed in the chat. Yeah, he did. He dives in, he he did have a lot to do, but that's some fucking strike, that. I Oh, that's what you call a thunder bastard, isn't it? Yeah. That's what you're, a, a keeper's got no chance there. Reminds me of the goal. Do you know what, though? That Rodgers won't be as hard as. Was it Leah Williamson kicked the South ball? Hampton. Remember they were doing the rounds in, in the World Cup when a woman yeah. took the ball? I, I still can't believe that her shot is harder than that shot that I've just seen it. Oh, yeah. I need Joe White to get booked then. Because it's the super sub thing. Oh, right. Before, yeah. The young kid. Ah, so Bruno, that, who are you with? Paddy Power. Ah, we're with Sky, Sky Bet. We're too woke. They never give you that. And Casido hasn't he hasn't done the fouls either. Listen, I was wrong yesterday with um, City. I think there might be another goal here. Oh, oh no, we need. I was wrong Chelsea yesterday with save. the City result, but I'm, I'm looking. Uh, I've done all right on the Monday nights. I've not been far away on the Monday nights. Newcastle get back in this. Still time. Of course they can. Still fucking time. Right now. Great tackle! Wow. See, that's that. That's what I think John McGinn was trying to do, but just completely He's fucked up his running right? for it. Looks like Predator. Alien versus Predator. Chalabar. Mm. 
tell you who Tuchel really liked him. He played a lot for Tuchel in that back three, uh, Chalaba. I, I thought he was gonna mm. maybe scare the England squad under Tuchel. He was that good as he a was close, wasn't he? He was close, wasn't he? But uh, especially with England oof. at the time, where we were playing the odd fucking back three, England would have. And then you had, yeah. you had the, and he didn't have a back three to a fixed back three, did he? Oh. He's, he's done his own step over there. He's done himself. been some poor football in this match tonight. Who was that there? Chum Wecker? Is that the yeah. boy who um, came from Aston Villa? I don't know. Yeah, they paid a few quid to him. Chum Wecker. Chum Wecker. There's a few of them. Chum Wecker or something like that. Chum Wecker. I'll be wrong what I've said. They were a band in the way. He's the one, isn't he? He was a highly rated kid and he went into Gerard and was saying to Gerard he should be playing and he and like confronted like that. Confronted the manager as a 17 year old. was like, I should be fucking playing. He wants a 50 grand a week or something. Gerard must have been like, what the fuck? So we had a bit of a frosty relationship anyway. The kid went and signed for Chelsea. Some balls at 17 to walk into Steve Gerrard as the Aston Villa manager and say, listen, I should be playing on a one fucking 50 bangers a week at 17. Like an iconic player like that. Yeah. You, you've got to have some belief in yourself, to be fair. Yes, but Chelsea have obviously given it to him. And more, probably. And more, yeah. And, but he hasn't kicked on. He was, he was, he was in that. the team a he little bit. He was playing at the start of the season, got injured. Yeah. But still, oh, right. did he I, get injured, I did don't he? think he's got... He's, he's not a kid that you look at and think he's got that kind of trajectory where he, <clears> he could have the balls to go and say that he's and back, back, rated, back you know, it up. No, no, honest to God, he's, everyone says he's a fucking really good player. I haven't seen have enough not seen of it. him at this oh. level. But everyone says he's a fucking really talented boy. Like, can he chum my wecker, is it? Close enough. enough. Close enough, that, isn't it? I'll, I'll just stop those. Yeah, chucker. Chuba Chuba Wumba. Fucking Chewy. Fucking Chewy. Been a good game for a Monday, lads. We, we've been lucky the last few weeks with in terms of the goals. Did, we've had some exciting Did he do that on purpose to try and put uh, more of an exciting game on a Monday? Is that what they no. do? No. Or is it just like the run of the fixtures? Just run of the fixtures, is it? Really, yeah. Every game's. Nah, they select them, don't they? The Premier League is like, yeah. Everything. Even the games the weekend, <laughs> the shit head teams. <laughs> Even the shit head teams the weekend, they were like the, at the bottom of 2 2 game. That was like, yeah, that, that was a good game. I think, as I say, I think. Two sides for different reasons that are trying to find a bit of rhythm and a bit of routine, like in terms of like a regular team selection. Chelsea have obviously had a little bit more of that recently than Newcastle with the yeah. injuries, and I think that's shown tonight. I think Chelsea are on a little bit of an, a, a little little momentum yeah. like ride, even though you know the league table doesn't look look make them look too favourable. I've said that before. They, they they seem to be like on a little bit of an up. And, and Newcastle just looked like fucking oh, that, scratching around week to week. Yeah, that looks sore. It did look nasty. That looked like this studs so went down. So we've got a though banged into anyone else yet, no? No, he should do soon. He's a fucking crab. You're just saying that because he turned us down. No, I'm saying Chelsea that because he's a bigger so club. Happy he's crab. just saying because he said Chelsea is a bigger club than yous. And in Ecuador, no, it's or it's, it's, it was just my... I don't want to accept my mum. Yeah, but, but if, he, if, he's, if he's a Chelsea fan... Why the fuck's he gonna and Chelsea wanna sign him? The fuck's he gonna go to Liverpool for? And and, and let's be honest, based on how old he is, 21, 22, Chelsea have won about the same amount of European cups and titles, in his more life. league titles than news, and and what one or two? Well, he's got two, and they've got one in his lifetime. So he's seen them win more leagues than yeah, and you've only won one more Champions League than them. So he's probably like he's yeah, Ecuadorian. He Who was that? So just because Liverpool in your world's massive, don't don't think. think in every Bond's world. Is that Joe White? Oh yeah, my God. It is. He's got it, yeah. you it got is. Joe White in. He's got a booking, <laughs> lad. Better, yeah. No, no, no. What? Oh my God. No way. White's got a booking, yeah. Joe White's Guess what else I've done, though? Both keepers to make two saves. And Chelsea have made one save. Oh, no. I'll mark that. that. And then I was, I was going to swerve it as well. He's done Chelsea. Both You're keepers to make me. two saves. So, all oh, you need, Ian, And I need save. Chelsea to make a save in the fucking... In the last 30 Net seconds. Oh, oh, attack, yeah. What a bet. Oh yeah, you've hit the bar. What well, price did you get for that? I've had, I've hit the bar. What so was that? Much, Forty like, odds. What was that? Yeah. No, like seventy. Was it? Oh no, sorry. And the, and the no, sorry, that was the goal for you. Yeah. Two thirteen. So it was like twenty to one. Yeah. I needed. I'd let you need Chelsea to make a save. I can't have the advantage. Who Fernandez? Enzo's teeth. How are you saying that when you, you what, had Bobby Firmino in your side? So you much. had the brightest teeth anyone's ever seen. No, they were. They were I just. Oh, touch. It just doesn't suit his teeth. Look bigger than his head. That's a yellow. That's a yellow. Come on. Ah. Oh. Fuck it up. Have a shot. Oh. Is it? Oh, he might get a shot That's here. That's it, over. Oh, please. No, no, stone. he might get a shot here. Oh, stone, stone, stone. You castle needs to get Ketz by it, though. <laughs> Ketz by it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a oh, kick he's going to blow. Just hit it. He's going to blow. 
He's gonna block. Yeah, he's gonna block. Don't throw it back. Why would you throw it there? Uh, he might, he might, he might, sometimes, lad, you say to him how long and the ref goes, you still got two minutes here, I don't, you know what I mean? He doesn't, oh, he doesn't, just take it out for a throw, uh, <coughs> he doesn't know about sure. the clock, then the ref will be talking to the lads all around, how oh, long, 30 seconds, 15 seconds. Yeah, you bit the bar there. Man of the match, put that on. Three, two. Palmer. Three, two. Man of the match, Palmer. Uh, man of the match, Cole Palmer for yeah. me. Gotta be, uh... Albeit, be, uh, I, th I thought, in terms of, perform, like, performance, I thought it was a fair. I, I think Newcastle have had an off performance. I've never Botman, but like there was a few air and scare moments for that back line, which mm. I, I mean, yeah, like, I, I I thought Botman was like from what I've seen, I, I think he's a fucking top player. I'm surprised nah, I'm not really, he I'm didn't not. even go bigger for him, Leo, than Newcastle. Honestly, I was when they took him because he was linked with some of fucking big clubs. Forty million. Yeah, he was linked with some big clubs. United and Liverpool linked with him, and, and I like him a lot. He's had a bad game tonight by his own standards. You know, the clearance for the first goal could be better. But you have to give Jackson and Palmer credit because it was a hell of a finish. Cole Palmer just looks like And to be fair to Palmer, player. he's cut through again. I think the shot goes through. But is it Botman or Baines likes the second Baines, one? And I and think Dubravka should get on to it. I think Pope would have saved it. Um, Isaac, for me, is a class act. It was finish a great yeah. goal. Just finish, yeah. Good player. Pure finish. Yeah, the good but, game, Chaloba. Yeah, Chaloba, as I say to you, Chaloba. Chaloba, um, <laughs> he, he was, I think, under Tuchel, f like flying. Hasn't quite happened for him since. No, it hasn't. Um, but I thought he was really good tonight. Like, mate, you know, Colwell's been good for Chelsea. I think he's been a, a bright kind Colwell's of a great spark. Mm. <clears throat> but I thought uh, Chalaba done well um, in, in his absence there. No, Col Colwell's a great player. Eddie Howe, was, did he good. definitely start to feel the squeeze or what, Eddie? No, Howe? not this season. Good guy, Eddie. I think it, 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 if you're right, the side is might make some may make change in the summer because you've given I'll this. Tell you what, he, he knows how to make an appearance. I know Tyndall cops a lot of fucking eats, but that that uh, Graham Jones, Graham Jones, yeah. 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 Martin, Jones man, man, he man, knows yeah. where the cameras yeah. are. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he, he's not he's not shy of a camera either. So I know Tyndall cops the flak, but um, it's clearly a team tactic. To be fair, I got it wrong before. Newcastle is still in the still in the FA Cup, so there's oh, still wow. something to play for. But playing play City. City. <laughs> yeah, so, City, City, City. Season's still alive, so is it at St James's or the Etihad? Uh, Have a look at that. They'll be at the Etihad if they're warm balls. Listen, up at St James's with the with the with the warm tsunami ball. behind them, <laughs> they'll, they'll fact that you know they won't they won't they won't fear City. It's that City. At yeah, the Etihad, yeah. it's a bit mm. trickier. Yeah. But yeah, City might, you know, City might have. Yeah. City might have a league game or a, a Champions League game there where See, Luton play. If Forest on, lose, Luton for play Burnley midweek. Forest lose them six points. They're fucked. Absolutely fucked. It's mad how Chelsea have just won and they're still not in the top ten. Like there's one not in the top ten. There's only ten, what is the ten left? It's the last ten. Yeah. It's the last quarter of the season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is what the, is proverbially known as the fucking business end of the season. Like this is where you know that Men goal yesterday, boys. that penalty yesterday. That's the title. That could be the title for Liverpool. Yeah. McAllister getting that pen and you'd fancy him to score because he'd already put one away. He'd scored that one. And the keeper was not Edison, who's a, it was Ortega, who's a smaller keeper. Players champ, any uh, predictions for that oh, yeah, this good weekend? Week the golf, sport, lads. Good, good week of sport. sport. Uh, do you want to touch on the cha championship? A few people putting in the chat room. Did we see any of the championship uh, football this weekend? Well, I've obviously seen the results coming. I haven't seen like any of the thing because you don't get the same coverage on the TV, do you, as the Premier League? You're going to get more you see now, so it's one yeah. of them, isn't it? So you, yeah, I mean, and if it, and if the fucking Premier League's not on, then the WSL's in, impacting on watching Championship games. Yeah, and, true. Um, you know, you, you see less of it because your focus remains on the top boys. But we obviously, watch the results to see what's happening at both ends of the both ends of the table. And obviously, QPR, one of my old clubs, are scrapping away against um, the wrong side of the table. But certainly more optimistic than what it was before. Um, you know, the the new manager. Uh, came in because I thought they were doomed before mm. and they got rid of like Les Ferdinand and that crew and, and I think his final spin of the dice was the last manager um, and obviously they've gone a different direction with this Marty Cofuentes Cuf or whatever and to be fair to him he's, he's getting a tune out of them albeit mm. there's still a fucking there's still a bit of squeaky bum between now and the end of the season for the for the QPR fans I'm just going to look at the table now yeah I've got it um, West Brom West Brom, I just think it's too far back on 63. To, to, I think it's Ipswich, Southampton, Leeds, Leicester. And I think Southampton, I don't know why, they got a game in hand. That takes him to two points behind Ipswich. I think I think they've got to play each other yet. They have in two games. They play Southampton, play Ipswich at Ipswich. <laughs> All right? Right. Southampton have also got to go to Leicester and Southampton have also got to go to Leeds. 
So it's it's the outlier for me to say Southampton, but I, I've just got a f- weird feeling Southampton will get in the mix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, we've got another great um, shout But the here. first two, I think, uh, in the chat, just turned it on. First, the first two are going to go up. I'll let another lookalike for the guy in the hat. Darren G. <laughs> oh, no, Darren no, G's no. had Stephen Warner, Peter Crouch. Stephen Warner, <laughs> Peter Crouch. <laughs> Peter Crouch. Hello, was getting uh, Matthew yeah. McConaughey last week. Oh, <laughs> you've, gone, all yeah, you've gone down the bottom. Down the bottom is the interesting one in the champ because you've got Chef Wed on 38, sitting second bottom, Uddersfield 38, Birmingham 39, QPR 39, Stoke 41, Blackburn 41, Plymouth 41. That's tight. tight. I said to you last week, it was tight. how many points between all that? But again, like the, the, the thing is, this, wasn't, like, this is a mad thing. Rooney's on, as you say, on the Everton game, Saturday talking about Everton. I'm like, Birmingham was six when he, when he took the job. Like, I know. I'll keep I'll be keeping my nut down and go, oh, go on, fuck, I'll get Birmingham fucking relegated to the air. And he says, you know, don't be telling Everton mm. and Man United what to do. I can't get your nut down. And, you know, come back in as a better coach and a better manager and a better, you know, just like the season's still live and you're basically taking. I, I think they were overachieving when he got the job anyway. You know, in terms I was going to say John that. John Eustace had them overachieving, but also they were sixth or whatever when you fucking took the job and they're now 21st. John Eustace just got another job. Maybe Blackburn. Not Blackburn. John Dale yeah. Thomason left Blackburn yeah. and Eustace has got a gig there. But again, they're in a fucking tailspin. They're in a dogfight. Shuey obviously is in at Stoke. Mm. Massive club with big fucking expectations down there. QPR, former Premier League club. Like Hud- Huddersfield, former Premier League club. Sheffield Wednesday, a juggernaut, really, for, for championship in terms of... <laughs> size of club. Size yeah. of club. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than a, yeah, probably a yo-yo Tried. championship to League One, etc. Yeah. Um, who's gone in there? It was... Um, I know who's gone in there. Um, it was Paul Cook's assistant, Liam Richardson. Uh, yeah. Who, who'd done a good job in, in Paul's absence and he's obviously got a shitty end of the stick getting a Rotherham gig there. I think his pressure will be, can he get them up next year? Because that's what they tend to be, a big club in League One but a small club in the champ. Mm. Plymouth gone up last year. They'll be just wanting to stay up. But Blackburn nearly got a playoff promotion run going last year and have tail spun. Yeah. Like to the fact that they got rid of John Dahl Thomason and, and obviously Eustace is in there firefighting. So, bottom know, of the champ's going to be very, very interesting as well. Do you know much about that? Sh- what's his name? Schmoddix? Yeah, top That's scorer in the champ. Yeah. yeah, he was at Peterborough, Sammy Schmoddix. He was at yeah. Peterborough it's in League One when we were at Fleetwood. Yeah. To be fair, Good he was a bit of a will of, a will of the wisp. Yeah, why not? I, I think he scored 21 and three assists in the champ. Like, you know, in, in his Blackburn side that we're saying, they're struggling mm-hmm. compared to what they have been uh, the year before. Another one's Adam Armstrong, the young kid who was at Newcastle with us, who's at Southampton. Yeah, had to go 18 the goals and 11 assists but this he had, season. He had to go in the Prem last season, Armstrong, no, like, again, didn't he? Man, but you can't just rule them out off one season. I know and he's in mean. a shit team, you know, Southampton were at the bottom of the table. Yeah. Uh, Morgan Whitaker's the other one at Plymouth. Plymouth, as I say, down the bottom there, and he's got 18 goals and seven. And he was, where did he get him from, Whitaker? Was he, did he come out of Swansea? He took him in League One out of Swansea. Can't believe Swansea sold him. Derby, went Derby to Swansea, and then he went on loan to... Um, Plymouth he was linked with Glasgow Rangers Plymouth ended up getting him over the line on a permanent and he's fucking I think he's yeah. a really good player he's only 23 I think he's a good player could, could go again mm-hmm. well, and then you've got the boy Somerville and, and who's on 15 goals at Leeds who were like and the young lad Jack Clark who, who Spurs paid money for great yeah. player and he's done yeah. brilliant at Sunderland player, they've had a tough season as well good. so I think the, the champ's always a good league I like watching what, the champ what about Preston Lowy I just think it's a midland season. Like, Lowe, uh, you know, there was a weird one where he was, and I, I, I like Ryan a lot, I think he's done a great job. Um, but it felt like he was going to leave. Like, I felt, he was like arguing with the fans and it was a bit like fucking, I thought, oh, he's saying some mad stuff in the press. Usually I see them as a precursor to a manager leaving, you know, but they've got through that turbulent period and actually turned around and started getting results. And I think he's got the fan base back on side and, I think they'll be... Did they draw at the weekend with... Or did they lose at home to uh, Stoke? I'm just trying to see. I can't remember. They were getting beat by Stoke because I was obviously looking at the results. Stoke actually beat them 2-1 at home, which they'll be fuming off because they're trying to keep pace with your holes, trying to keep pace with Norwich you've picked up again under... Not a uh, yeah. David up, yeah. Warner, yeah. is it? What? Wagner. 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 But he, you know, it was, as I say, a shit star for them. I thought he was going to lose his job. And and they persisted with him, and then Norwich are on a good run now. You know, mm. good, good good plays in there. Hull are on a decent run. Mark Robbins has done a good job at Coventry, and obviously Lowy sits in that group behind with uh, Preston. I just think getting beat at Stoke at, at home at the weekends probably fucking just a mortal wound for them. 
with 12 games, what have they got to go? 10 games to go? Mm. Yeah. Like, like you, you can't, because teams start motoring and start fucking yeah. putting five or six wins together. And it's Stoke at home for them. I know Stoke, are, but they're, they're in the bottom half of the table. Yeah. If you want to get promoted, you've got to beat the bottom half of the table teams at home. Um, yeah, anything else? Any, uh, that's the champ dealt with. That's the champ dealt with, yeah. Just listening to these two. Um, we stay. We staying on to half ten. We gonna stay on to half ten. Stay, yeah. stay on fifteen so twenty. Just to get we'll a few questions. Stay on fifteen to twenty. Listen, no, bang, bang, bang yeah, questions best. in. Anything you want to ask us? What um, have Everton got to do for these last ten games to stay up? <sighs> Start fucking scoring goals. How, how are they gonna score goals? They cannot score a goal. Is it? Well, de- is don't it... let fucking Beto take penalties. Is a start. <laughs> okay, now. Um, I, I I I just think we're suffering from you. You're not scoring goals. It's you just supply route. But you aren't playing bad though. But you're just shoot, shooting sh- twenty three shots against United. You should have scored at least one. I should have yeah. beat United. I think it was six I on target. Should have beat United. But we're certainly you know the, the two nil scoreline flatters United. They were both penalties. The problem you've got is when you don't score, the blo- the longer you go on without scoring. Confidence just Confidence evaporates pressure. out your strikers, so then your wingers are like fucking hell. The pressure. Then they start and it just comes down the chain, and then all of a sudden your back line's under pressure because Pickford's kept the most clean sheets, hasn't he, in the division? Something like that now. So all of a sudden now they're like fucking hell. I've been in teams with uh, that Man City side we were in um, with Bernardo, Caradi, and Vassell and all that. Like I was top scorer that year, I think, with eight in the Prem, and we stayed up comfortably. But it was weird because we knew we had a fucking good defence. But if ever we conceded the goal, it was like, fucking hell, are we going to score two here? Or yeah. So we just put enormous pressure on the defence, you know, and eventually that takes its toll. And I think that's what's happened with Everton. I think the defence has been under so much pressure because of the lack of goals in the team in the last few weeks that even that starting to... Like, the two tackles, Tarkowski and fucking Godfrey, make just like, what, what the fuck are you doing? Why is he defending? Just like, just give him Man United the goal, pretty much. Just dangling yeah. legs. And and uh, like you know you gotta make you gotta you gotta fucking make it harder for United to get the nose in front. I think if Everton had stayed in that game, you could have argued they're gonna get chances in the crowd had turned, and Everton might have fucking had a chance to nick it. Yeah, no, I. I, um, I but again, the game and it was... you know, McNeil's got obviously personal problems, so I'll take me ass off to him for fucking carrying on turning up because he knows Everton need him. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he's playing his best footy. I think I, I, thought, I thought Jack Harrison is. Was terrible someone, in the game. Someone I seen just said in the chat he needs dropping Harrison for for Dobbin. Or I thought he was terrible, and, and I'm like, what could you lose out of putting the young kid Dobbin in there? Like he was terrible. I, I, like he literally never fucking. Now Dice is a cre- he'll keep persistent with you. So that's good if you're a player and you're not playing well because he he's consistent and he'll he'll help you get out of a funk. But also, at, you know, if you're a winger and you don't fucking what you do, you, you defend Deliver. really well. He, to be fair to Harrison, he runs about and he charges round and he, and he has a go. But you don't put a fucking cross in of any quality. You don't fucking beat a man. And, you know, at some point, the ball, at not, some point, well, you know, as Liverpool look at, like, give the kids a chance to see what they can do. Can he be any worse? Yeah. Give Dobbin a go. Can he be any worse? There's Cole Palmer out talking. Did you hear him the week talking about his aim? Um, is that his after? I'll tell you what, he's good. He's, he's lucky for him, he's good at fussy, isn't he? Because fucking hell, he is, uh, he looks like plug out the no. Beano. <laughs> Look, especially with them fucking cans on. Like they killed him. Look at fucking alien. <laughs> <They're> lawless. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that haircut as well. It's that fringe. I mean, he's he's got to go and get. Uh, he's got to go and get the Amsterd sorted out. And let's be honest, he's got fucking. Got known red, as the got yeah. red rums fucking teeth in there. He's known as the mouth. He should be at Cheltenham like this week. He'd be at Cheltenham. He's known as the mouth breather. On the Twitter. mouth. <laughs> the mouth breather. He'd be at Cheltenham this week with the bride. You could sling a bridle on him there. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I'm going to Cheltenham. But he's a um, fucking cracking player, to be fair. Yeah. to cracking player. Are we going to lump on, lump on uh, the Gold oh, Cup? Oh, yeah, this is a cracker. Any Cheltenham tips? Cheltenham tips. No, I haven't really looked at it. I was speaking to Charlie Austin this afternoon, who's, who's a mad racing expert, to see if he was going, because we've been a few times. And, um, see, I think, I honestly think he had, just while we're on it, I think Dubravka should get to this. I know he's unsighted because it goes through the player's legs, but look where he is. The ball doesn't go in the corner. The goal, yeah. Um, Cheltenham yeah I'm not massive I, I'm away aren't I in Switzerland so I haven't like plugged into it otherwise I might have even done a watch along and we'd have watched it which we, we will do for the yeah. Masters I think um, and obviously there's no games next Monday it's FA Cup so and the we, weekend after we, and the weekend after is uh, international. The international so we won't be here on a Monday night but we'll look at the games we might pick a Saturday game or a Sunday might do game an England game maybe or, or, a, or an England game or a midweek game just to keep that um, regular uh, slot but it won't be Monday the next couple of weeks. 
Um, what was I talking about? Cheltenham. There? Cheltenham. Cheltenham. Do you still and speak to the flyer? Uh, who's the flyer? Martin Dwyer. Yeah, yeah. I still every now and again I don't speak to him because he's more on the flat, isn't he? So I don't speak to him like loads because I haven't got as many horses in today. I haven't got like, as I used to have. But I still, um, I still keep in touch with him. I'm going to get him on the podcast actually because he's got a fantastic story, like how you become a jockey from Wiston, and he's a right. Mackie Evertonian, so he'll be, he's good value the live wire. And um, when I look at Cheltenham, and I think are the gods just shining on us and presenting us this information? <laughs> and then when we see at Cheltenham, you're not going to believe this. There's a horse going that's our tip for the meeting. Fourteen to one. Fourteen to one. Gentleman's game. <laughs> Gentleman's game. <laughs> and and if Lump the Lord is with us and we all, um, and that goes in, then it's it's telling the the females that even <laughs> the horse racing gods are on our side. Um, but no, look, hopefully it's a good meet for everybody, and you don't uh, have to remortgage your house at the end of it. Hopefully you're buying a new house rather than remortgaging your <laughs> house. Um, but it's 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 a great week. It's great to go down and be there, have a few Guinnesses and that. Um, but also, as I say, I'm busy this week in, in other ways, so I'll, I'll be watching it, um, having a little flutter from a distance, yeah. but also I'm not massively I'm gonna, engaged. I'm going to lose a few quid this week, definitely. You? It's a great uh, meet, isn't it? Yeah. It's the, it, you know, the, 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 Ascot's the same for the flat. It's the Olympics of horse racing. It's the best of the best. They all come over from Ireland, come from all over the world. And you know, when, you real, when you're into racing like I am, there's such incredible athletes to go and run three and a half, four miles and jump fences with some fucker sitting on your back and then the cunt's whipping you in the last thing you to get your beak in front. Yeah. You know, hats off to the horses and they don't get any fucking dough. They get a big bag of fucking hay and a few fucking sugar lumps and that's it. <laughs> well, a jockey gets a load of champagne, all the pats on the back of the trophy and, and you're like, that cunt hasn't fucking had you fucking ran the race there. And you fucking swelling with a bucket of water. Well, it's all about finished. equal rights. Yeah, you get a fucking big bucket of water, fucking launch in your face and a few slabs <laughs> on your ass for getting, a, for getting a job done. You're like, you've already whipped me, my fucking ass is stinging. Last thing I need is a few more times. On it, but maybe they're into that. Maybe the Sado Masochists, and we don't know. <laughs> Sado Masochist horses, yeah. Maybe they get well, they clearly, they get a thrill from it because they Red run the like chaps on and all that, huh? yeah. They run like, yeah. Um, so yeah, well, I think I think we do one for the Masters because I think just just see what 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 um, looking forward to the Masters this year. Have you yeah. watching that full swing on Netflix? No, I haven't, I haven't really, watched you know, it. Everyone keeps saying brilliant. to me, watch it. I haven't had the fucking time, too busy watching fucking footy. Sawgrass this week. weekend, Sawgrass, the, the unofficial fifth major in the TPC Sawgrass. Um, did Scotty Scheffler win last night when I when I went to bed? Fifteen, yeah. He, he, he was five. Yeah. I thought uh, he's he, mad golf swing, but serial winner. Um, McIlroy, you just well, his issue last year. Can McIlroy win the Masters? Of course, of course he, he can. can. Fucking shit the bed there though, and that's in his head there. He should have won it. Fucking shit the bed, didn't he? So it's he... been ten years since he's won his last major. major yeah. Saying yeah. it's because it feels like he's turning when his first major again. Yeah, he just doesn't have that presence that. Do you he's Kepka, 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 Kepka has got that. Kepka's got, Kepka's got that yeah. major winning presence. Yeah, he doesn't have it. Tiger had it. Like, he, 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 he has, when he's, he's on, McElroy, he beats everyone when he's on. What's he on now But I would for? argue that Dustin Johnson's the same or Kepka's the same. Like, mm. I, I can't sit, and John Rahm's the same. I can't sit here and Scheffler's the same. I fucking, like, I can't sit here and say, because the numbers don't start, add up. Like, I hate to say this, but he's not a fucking good putter. If he could put, he'd be, he's Tita Green. Well, Sheffield's putt was awful last year. Did you see, he was like one of the worst putters, but he still, he was, he was the best iron player, wasn't he? The best ball player. I, I love it. I, I, see... I, can't, I don't get the fucking smoke about McElroy. I really, really don't. Like, I, I, I think they tried to shoe on him into the Tiger thing, and he's just not, he's too nice of a guy. He's not a fucking, no way. McElroy's flattening every single fucking thing with a pulse in his fucking radar. He's too nice. He's, he's only small. He's a Man United fan from Northern Ireland. Remember this big Kelly Air he came through? I think he's a bit of a nerd. Usually the golf lads are fucking nerdy. I think he's you know, and I think Kepka, full swing, you get a good like look Tommy's a bit like that. Tommy Fleetwood's a bit like that. But I think that Kepka and John Rahm, they're fucking massive Dustin Johnson. There's no way they fear them on a golf course. And I think that shows, and it's as shown in the last 10 years, because they've got their beaks in front when Fleetwood maybe should have got over the line and when McElroy definitely should have got over the line. Johnson has gone on and winning. Kepka's gone on and winning. I would argue even Spieth's a fucking... More serial winner when he gets his fucking a sniff of a bit of blood in the water. And I would argue fucking Justin Thomas and Scheffler are as well. It's a great sport though, isn't it? Oh, Highly not better. Especially if you can play at a decent level. Like, you realise how good they are. Like, it's... I think it's a phenomenal game that you, if you play and you play it well. But if you play it shite, it's fucking horrible. It's not like the place. Yeah. Just you and your clubs and all the curse words in the dictionary. It's seen a little bit of DEI D- e- as well though, isn't it? Golf, they've got the... Um, what's the girl who does the Laura analysis? Davis? No. Oh no no! I used to sponsor it. 
Who, Laura Davis? No, the, the, the Asian girl off uh, the telly, I can't I get her name up now. I, I, yeah, she, yeah, she does the analysis and stuff, doesn't so she? I, when I was done a thing with the podcast with Clive Woodward, he asked me to sponsor a couple of junior athletes coming through, and they were, obviously they don't say about it, but they were females, and she was one. Inky Memmers or something like that, her name yeah, is. Yeah, that's it. So we ended up sponsoring her for a couple of years yeah, to see if it. she could get onto the tour and all that. But again, I hate women and I'm against women fucking in every single domain, aren't I? <laughs> I'm not, as you know, I love women. And I just fucking hate women talking about men's football. Um, and, and you know, as I say, she never quite... And I think Clive and whoever the management team, for Clive to be putting a few of us on on her early, and she was a member at Royal Mid Surrey, I think, when, when, we, when I was there. Um She's clearly Royal Mid Surrey's quite close to I I always Sky, so she's clearly well connected and obviously she's transferred. She can't be a top female golfer. So she's ended up becoming like one of the go-to female analysis on Sky. Ticks a couple of boxes, doesn't she? Mm. You know, and I, I don't know. I'm not a top level golfer, so I, I, I wouldn't listen to you know, I, I, I wouldn't listen to her and go, I don't know what the fuck she's on about, because she's clearly a better golfer than me. Like I listen to Laura Davis, but also they're not on every single programme. And yeah. Dame Laura Davis has fucking won multiple times. And obviously this girl's tried to be a player, but they're the only two I see in golf. Like, I don't mind the odd one in there if they're good. You know, the odd lady in there if they're good, but we to, we've just got market saturation. They're on every fucking programme. As I say, you know, even the rugby are on it, they go, right, we'll put her on the shit one just to fucking tick the box. Mm. Even though she's all right, Maggie. She's not too bad when you listen to her. She hasn't got like an annoying voice like some of the female commentators on, on the men's game. And then... The problem you've got is every show or every co comes, they just shoe on them in. But as we know, and as I'm saying there, they, they know the shit because they fucking take them off all the big games and all the big programs. So they know, they're not stupid. Other weekend sport, did you watch the Nganu Joshua? I did, fight? yeah. Although I was, I was uh, slightly, uh, I ended up having a game of snooker and had a few sherbets. So I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't tuned into it like this is a serious contest. It was more like, as a kind of voyeur. And I thought Anthony Joshua just fucking dealt with him like he should have a, a boxer like Tyson Fury. Everyone thought Tyson Fury was going to, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't get overly carried away about like beating Anthony him. Joshua beating him because he's obviously had the look at him in the Fury fight, studied him, and then been on point for his preparation because he's seen Fury come unstuck because he'd underprepared for him. Yeah, correct. I and he flattened well. him, didn't he? You know, Carl Froch's analysis on it. I don't know what you see seen on Froch's YouTube channel, which is good because he's a yeah. top fighter. Like, listen, like yeah. listening to Frochy. And again, open to get, get him on. He spoke about the mistake Nganu made, and he said, look, he's just switched his feet here, which he'd have got away with in MMA. But any good boxer would have recognised that, especially a two-time heavyweight champion like Joshua against a novice in a second bout. And he just goes bang, bang. Because if, you, if you're fighting a southpaw, it's just a one-two down the pipe. Yeah. And he just fucking, that's how he knocks him out. Just fucking walks onto a, a, a fucking... And if Anthony Joshua's six foot eight, fucking hit you, you're going to Bobby's because he's a fucking big man. It doesn't matter whether you're a big fella. Yeah. And Garnu's six four, Joshua's six six. If they, they touch your chin, then boys, do you, what is it? Thirteen pounds of pressure on your chin to put you to kip. Mm. Imagine one Auntie Joshua, they fucking throwing sledgehammers at you with the size of that fella. Yeah, yeah you're gonna kip. Just, and I think person. Joshua and Eddie Ayn saying what they said after the fight. I think they, they, you know, they deluded. You know, let's let's not forget it was only two fights ago. He was having a breakdown in the ring, Climb fucking the ring. trying to grab the mic off Usyk. Yeah. Usyk still snotted them twice comfortably. And Usyk Fury is the fucking top fight in the world. Whoever mm. wins that's the top boy in the world. Fury looks like really trim when I've seen him. I've seen him with his fake beard and his waistcoat on the other day. But he looked he looked like he's been training his bollocks, training his bollocks off because of what happened in the Nganu fight. So I think it sets up perfectly. You're going to get the best version of Fury against Usyk, who's, who's a phenomenon for, for me. And the winner of that will end up fighting Joshua. And I'm hoping it's... Fury. We've seen Usyk, Fury. Uh, we've seen Usyk, Joshua. And, it, uh, and, and Usyk will win that again. Yeah. Joshua won't beat him, I don't think, if they fight again in a trilogy. But we haven't seen Joshua Fiori. And I you think that's the fight that. everyone wants to see. Biggest, especially if Anthony's coming back. That'd be the now. biggest British fight of all time. Well, we, we should have seen it four or five years ago when yeah. both men were more in the prime. But because the politics of fucking boxing, we haven't seen it. Which is sad because in the MMA, you see the best fight the best. I'm, I'm going to go home tonight and catch up from the UFC at the weekend. Obviously, Sean O'Malley, Chito Vieira, Peter Yan fighting again, who's one of my favourite fighters. And, and when you look at that, you go... Yeah, the best fight the best. There's no yeah. bollocks in that. Credit to Dana White. I'm, I don't agree with him with the power slap league. I think it's a fucking farce. But, <laughs> but the UFC now has become the fucking premier combat sports. It's taken over boxing for me. Women have got a power slap league. Yeah, you... I mean, look, any power slap league, just, I just, I, who wants to do that? But yeah, look, I'll crack be, on. I'll uh, be for the trans. 
I don't think Dana will have that. Dana won't have any of yeah, that shit. Dana won't have really that. Really He won't have any of that bollocks. Do you want to listen to this or we, some more weekend sports? Yeah, or, let's see what yeah. Eddie talks about. We can bang a few things on what the lads come the up through. Any questions? Just, people want to hear about the England Island game, but. <sighs> Watch England, asking about England Island, yeah. Where do you reckon Tyndall is now? Just, just, down. Down. just wait, camera. Yeah. Just wait right. down. Him and Graham Jones. Him and Graham Jones. <laughs> wait down. Now to near his camera. Yeah. Yeah. That's where he he's is. His beard. Yeah. Well, he's usually he won't be in the dressing room because he's usually in the middle of the photos. He's <laughs> out and he's doing photos after every win. He's rather smack banging. He's signing autographs just around the corner. Yeah. Let's let's let, 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 let listen to it. We want to talk about the rugby Ireland. Uh, England, England. Ireland. I mean, incredible for England. I was like. It's like, I've, like, the, I thought the celebrations were like a bit mad considering we haven't won a fucking thing. We've just beaten Ireland at home and stopped them winning the Grand Slam, which is massive. I thought uh, Ben Hill was fucking imperious in his performance, like the match winner, the, the, the difference maker. But again, that should, you know, you, you can only celebrate at that level if you've beaten Ireland to win the Grand Slam. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm like, We've made progress. I think Borfuk's done a great job bringing in Felix Jones, the, 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 the coach from South Africa. He's, he's obviously got Kevin Sinfield in there with a nice rugby league element. So I think for England it was massive. And obviously Andy Farrell, the mm. Ireland team, have been on a right surge. Never won the World Cup when they were fancying the chances Should massively. Have, yeah. I only know this because Glenn Whelan was in with, with Bristol Rovers at the time and he was getting a bit fucking carried away. The Ireland, the Ireland are going to win a World Cup and all that. And I said, just remember, you've, you know, you're, you're Irish. <laughs> You know, you, you know, you're not notorious with winning World Cups at any at anything. So like, like, Staying yeah, you're the best team in the world, but the All Blacks and the fucking Springboks, so, the yeah. tournament teams. And I actually thought England would do okay at that. I didn't think they'd get to the obviously semi and lose it by a point and win third place. But I, I thought England would do okay. I thought they'd do better than the Six Nations at this point. I think they've had some strange performances, but I thought they were fucking ex- exceptional. Certainly second period against Ireland. Who, who were, you know, legitimately top three in the world. Yeah. And to score it with the kick, I'm like, <sighs> like, it, it had shades of the Johnny Wilkinson. Johnny Wilson, and, yeah. and, you know, George Ford and, and, and the lads used that well under both. Like they've, they've used that drop goal. Yeah. But um, I think it was it was a big result. But also, we're not going to win the Six Nations Island. I think I'll, I'll win it next week. Mm. But it would have been the Grand Slam. So it is, a, it is a big thing. But also, like, I'm like, we're fucking England. There's 60 million people here. And the RFU spend fucking fortunes. There's only five million Irish people. Like, let's not be fucking carried away. We should beat them. Mm. France difference. Maybe we, Scotland and Ireland, uh, Wales are only four or five million people. France, yeah. France is 60, 70 million. Like us, Italy a bit more, but obviously new to rugby. Like, let's not get carried away. They, they fucking using. Andy Farrell was a British, uh, uh, an Irish Lions, Lions coach. Yeah. He was an England coach, and he could have got the England job, and we've lost them to the Ireland who've kicked on after. Uh, it was Joe Schmidt, the South African dude, who built a great culture there. So, I love watching the rugby, as you see. Yeah. I, I fucking have a sports fan. Would you go on a Lions tour? I've been on one. I went on one to New Zealand when I was 21, I think. That was 20, 21. So, I've done the full full three weeks with the with the Lions before I was kind of known at the level I am. I had the ball, but we got fucking smashed. That was the... Uh, I was at the test when Tanaru Manga spear-tackled Brian O'Driscoll into the ground. He was our captain, broke his collarbone. Yeah. Pretty much the fucking... S- <laughs> the ship sailed after that, we just got snotted. Yeah. And I had tickets for the other two tests, but I came home because I had pre season and I'm like, we ain't beating them. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and they, to see their culture to rugby just opened my eyes because it imagine imagine a world where football no one gives a shit about it and rugby's unions the dominant sport like, like that's difference. New Zealand. Yeah. Like their number one sport yeah. is fucking rugby union. Like yeah. there's not like 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 where ours is football. They like it's weird to see, but also how culturally gained in the schools and the, you know they all got different uh, hackers and that it's brilliant yeah, the see. hackers yeah. it just it's makes the hair tradition of it yeah. when I watch that hacker it's... and actually when you look back to that final South Africa winning the World Cup you know people forget fucking Sam Sam Kane got sent off the captain in the 27th minute and they only lost by a fucking point New Zealand it would have been the greatest rugby union World Cup win had they won that because they were down to 14 men for fucking 50 odd yeah. minutes of that game which at that level at a World Cup final level against the Springboks um, especially that you know, and Bowden and Barry and Jordy, but they missed a couple of fucking key kicks that they should have fucking I, I believe they should have got yeah 
you know, I know South Africa, South Africa had Khaleesi, you know, obviously go off and obviously the wing get late. But what a what a performance that would have been for the... It's a big, this is a big step. Yeah, huge. So, with, so, with, without so, Pope. I did say to you, Pope's that big, but also, you know, I, th I think that's a whole team thing. Like, Newcastle has gone from second, first in all the ranks to do with defensive stuff, you know, games, goals conceded, clean sheets, shots faced, to 20th, 19th, 15th, 15th, 17th. Yeah. That's massive, isn't it? Yeah. Save ratio, they've gone from 73%, which is Popey, to... 67, 67, which... 11, 30 to 11. But again, that 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 7% doesn't seem much, but that's how good a good goalie is, like, way after you. He, he can be a 7% fucking difference, which can be the difference between finishing 4th and finishing 14th. Right, I think right. Are we done for tonight? Yeah, it could be but half past here. Yeah. Half past, that was a right. good night. Good well, thanks one, lads, for, uh, for coming along. Everyone who's watching at home, thanks for tuning in. As I say, that's the watch along. Common Sense. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next Monday won't be here, but we'll keep the socials going. We'll, we'll we'll have a look at the games, pick a game. Might even be worth firing in. What games do you want us to cover in the next couple of weeks? Obviously, you've got an international one. Some of the yeah, England, yeah, some have, games. Some so, said England, like, but England game. But yeah, look, look we, we could do the England games, no problem. But but fire into us about the FA Cup, and I say we, we, we'll filter us through in terms of different shouts and and say if there's a bigger a bigger noise about watching a certain game and getting our feedback on it, then we will. Listen, might might you watch a WSL game if you if you watch along to the <laughs> yeah, WSL? Yeah. Or the England with Lionesses playing a game? I'm having shovel shit. Come, yeah, come in here, we'll take a load of magic yet. mushrooms and just watch <laughs> it in slow motion. Like, what the fuck's this? What is fucking going on? Um, uh, but listen, as I say, thanks for joining us. Um, appreciate <laughs> you with your comments, questions. Keep them firing in. Some great shouts. And uh, we'll see you next time we do the watch along. Got the uh, John Styles coming out Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Thursday. Well, Thursday. Till, the Dad and Till one, which is a crack, has just gone live yesterday. On YouTube. On, on U Spotify. On Spotify, on YouTube. Uh, and then we've we've done a podcast with John Styles, Nobby Styles' son, who's actually really topical at the moment in terms of CTE and players suffering from dementia and brain injuries and John was fascinating bit of a shorter podcast than we normally put out but I think it'll be of interest to, to all you mad footy fans out there so that'll be out Thursday um, and then we'll see you in the next watch along over the weekend thanks see you soon